Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Carton Show. We've made it to Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Yeah. That guy right there is David Jacoby. Yes. This guy right here is Super Bowl champion, Mr. Willie Cologne. And in about an hour from now, Super Bowl champion Plaxico Burris Plax. is going to join us. I don't know how you guys did it, but uh, it was a long, slow weekend with nothing to watch on TV because I don't like watching amateurs play golf at Pebble Beach. Yeah. Sorry, Aaron Rodgers. I have no interest in that dopey Pro Bowl thing of a jig was, that they do now. It was dopey. And I try to watch it. <clears throat> Can't yeah, watch it. Tough. It got so bad that I even ran out of excuses for my wife as to I need to be on the couch to watch this for my job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like you can always kind of pull yeah. that one off. Uh, she got hip to me in this one. She's like, is that flag football you're <laughs> They're watching? They're not wearing pants. You're going to talk about that on your show? My wife had the same reaction. Seriously. I was like, I got to watch this for the show. She's like, is that flag football? And I was like, yeah. She's like, when did this happen? It's like years ago. It's years ago. <laughs> they play tug of war right now? Yeah. Yes, I'm talking about that sure. yeah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And I never watched golf unless it's the Masters. Yeah. So I couldn't get away with that one. And then I convinced her last night, I have to watch the Grammys for the show. I really just wanted to see Lisa Ann get arrested, to be honest. <laughs> and that wasn't even at the Grammys. That was a Matt Rife comedy show. Yep. But uh, Killer Mike got arrested Correct. after the Grammys. And he was my concern about the Grammys. I watched I, I, I watched, oh. I watched with a very uh, with a trickle in my eye. A keen eye. So Taylor Swift won a whole bunch of awards. Yes. Fourth straight or fourth time in her life. She got Album of the Year, right? right. Not a single mention of number 87. She wasn't wearing a sticker. She didn't have, like, a Chiefs logo. Yeah. It was almost as if she's not dating I, I Travis love, Kelsey. I just love the idea that you want her to, like, wear <laughs> couture dress and, like, yeah. a foam finger. You know what I mean? It's like she didn't have a pin on. Nothing. She didn't have any face paint. Like, what if you said it was like, suit? either you're in love oh, you're and not. that's your man I, yeah. Or you're not, because I know when it's reversed, all that dude does is do the heart no symbol question. and look up into the crowd. No question. I mean, on top of that, like, first of all, she was handing an award to Cher, right? Not even, she didn't give Cher a shout out. Celine, Celine Dion. <laughs> yeah, Celine Dion, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and on top of that, how about, like, go Chiefs at the end of it? Like, something. something it is nothing. Super Bowl week. Right? Yeah. Like, and so it's just, I, I, I noticed that. So I'm not one of these guys that thinks it's a fugazi relationship. Oh, I yeah. just think, and this happens quite naturally, one person's a little bit more in love than the other person. Right? That's who took the same I thing I celebrate out. this relationship. I don't mind anything about it. The only time it was a little cringy was the heart sign. The, the heart the sign. Heart that's the only so time yeah. I was like, ah, I can do without that. It's very high school. You get points. You get points. Yeah. So meanwhile, we're trying to figure out what to do. Uh, you got the Grammys last night. You have obviously all the Pro Bowl games, whatever they're calling it now. And then, of course, the, uh, the prerequisite local news report. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the 747 from Kansas City has landed successfully yeah. at McCarran Airport. And then you get that from both teams. And then we sit here, and I do this too, and I'm mad at myself for doing it. But every year since God knows, I can't remember when I didn't do it, I sit there in front of the television, like you guys do, and... I watch grown men walk <laughs> off a plane. Yeah. It's like a moon landing. Like, yeah. 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 It's like kind that's of, what I do. It's kind of now, what I'm does. old enough to remember uh, the first time an NFL player walked off a plane and he had what amounted to like a briefcase over his shoulder kind of thing and like an old school camcorder. Yeah. Like oh, to yeah, try to yeah, you know, yeah. document it. Uh, now it's everyone with their phones, obviously. But I sat there mesmerized watching grown men walk down a flight of stairs and do nothing. And every year I say to myself, I don't care about the planes landing in Super Bowl City. And every year I sit there like an idiot going, is that, is that Christian McCaffrey? <laughs> is that Brock Purdy? Well, you know, that kind of thing. It's also a fit check type thing. You want to see what the guys is wearing. I remember the one Super Bowl we went to, or well, the prior to the one I went to was in 05, and the Steelers had won Jerome Bettis' jersey because that was going to be his last yeah. game, and they played in Detroit. They win the Super Bowl. Then we went, well, actually, the Super Bowl we lost against Greg, the offensive line, we wore Flozo Adams' jersey because he okay. went to Michigan State, um, and this was never been to a Super Bowl. So yeah. some guys rallied. There's always like a theme. There was no theme. They had been there done. It is interesting, though, that the Super Bowl, of course, is in Las Vegas, and all week long it's all Super Bowl coverage getting ready for Super Bowl 58. But the NFL is so concerned about the 106 active players between the two teams doing something stupid in yeah. Vegas that they're in hotels nowhere yes. near the Strip. Correct. And by law, by rule, none of them are allowed to walk inside a casino the entire week. 
Yeah, I'm sure they're just going to be studying the playbook <laughs> and, uh, you know, just getting ready for the game, stretching. Willie, like that. There's no way they could find a Can't. restaurant with an alcoholic beverage in no it. No shot at all. No. Although I did drink with Ben Roethlisberger down at uh, Hollywood Hard Rock before the Super Bowl win down in Florida. So this more than that I'm story coming up. I'm surprised that you see you always find out. yourself yeah, somewhere. You always see the guys out on Thursday, Friday. I'm like, what are That's you right. doing here? We got a great show for you today. A great week of shows, as a matter of fact. Plax will join us at 8 o'clock. We're going to tell your headlines. It's Super Bowl 58, and it starts today right here on FS1. Let's go, everybody. Super Bowl 58 week is now officially yep. underway here on FS1. Nothing like watching grown men walk. The plane. And I, 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 I vowed this was going to be the year I didn't do it, and I lost another vow. Uh, so they walk down the stairs. They walk across the tarmac. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to walk on a tarmac just once or twice? Uh, not have to deal with, uh, you know, gate A at Newark Airport. <laughs> In any event, it's now official. Yeah. Guys are here. I've been at 10 Super Bowls. I've never been a guy walking off the plane but. arriving at a Super Bowl like that. You have. Yeah. Just give us a quick little insight in your experience as guys are coming off the plane, what that moment is like. I mean, a lot of guys are super excited for, you know, my first Super Bowl. I mean, you just, you, you kind of have an out-of-body experience. You went experience. to two, right? I went to two. Yep. We, you know, I, we kind of have an out-of-body experience because, one, you finally arrived. There's media everywhere. Uh, you spend the next two or three days really trying to corral your family, keep them under control while you got to go out and do your job. And on top of that, Tickets are a problem because everybody wants a ticket from your kindergarten teacher to now your uncle who <laughs> right, just got released, right. right? So it gets it gets a lot. But overall, it's really by by Wednesday is when you lock in. Is when you because you know they've already had a week of practice, so they know what they're going to get ready for and how to prepare. Wednesday, these next two days is really about the media getting guys calmed down, getting guys locked in. And I'm happy these guys moved away from this strip yep. because the one people, some of the people that's going to be attending this game, especially family members, they're going to be on the strip and they're going to be calling you, right? And they're going to be showing you with the drinks and at the casino table. You got to learn how to block that out. So the fact that they're here now and they kind of settled in is a good thing. Yeah, and that, when I said earlier to start the show, I meant that the NFL recognizing what Vegas brings, obviously, you know, yep. the gambling aspect of it, the nightlife aspect of it, which is not, that part's not unique to Vegas, because if you want to go party, you can party any city in America. But if you're on either team, you are not allowed to physically walk into a casino. And they are so concerned about that because of the gambling implications, uh, despite the fact that they're in bed with all the gambling operators. Right. Yeah. But they don't want to see, like, if you saw Patrick Mahomes, bad example, or any of the players, you're in a casino where there are sports books. Now it's like, oh, oh, integrity of the sport. Well, I tell you this, Craig. When, I remember when we landed in Tampa for the first Super Bowl, my first Super Bowl. Man, we sat down. As we got to the hotel, we sat down with the FBI. And the FBI had, like, a security briefing, like, Wherever you go, we got detail. Two, wow. we, there's something, they, want us, they didn't want us to go to Ybor City. You know, right. if you know the, Ybor City is a neighborhood in Tampa where it's just lines and lines of bars lot of and fun. restaurants they, lot of fun. and clubs. And I've had a few nights there. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> right. And now, I want to be clear. It's nowhere near Mons Venus, yes. which is the legendary strip club right. in I'm, Tampa. I know what you're talking about, Craig. But there's plenty of things to do. Go ahead. Well, pretty much every I was telling us places, places to stay out of and stay away from. And, and they kind of give you a whole briefing where you're allowed to go and where you're not allowed to go. And then on top of that, you know, Coach Tommy gave us the rest. But overall, man, these guys are being briefed how to handle So here's things. the question, Willie. How many nights did you and your buddies miss uh, checking for, uh, for, for bed check? Not, Super Bowl not one. Not one. We didn't miss one. I promise you. We Three? Didn't. Yeah, no. <laughs> he said not one. Maybe he said not one. <laughs> All right, headline number two, uh, Steve Wilkes, kind of the embattled defensive coordinator of the San Francisco 49ers, said what we all know. And this is what I like about Steve Wilkes. He's not one of those coaches that gives you cliches and coach speak, and we'll let you hear the sound later in the show. But Steve Wilkes came out yesterday and said, look, our defensive effort the last two games against Green Bay and against Detroit, and I'm quoting him now, embarrassing and inexcusable. Ooh. How about that? That's laying it out there. Super Bowl week. I like it. Yeah, I like it. And I like what John Lynch had to say. And this is coming from a guy who played on a historic defense down in Tampa. He goes, listen, yeah. our core value, it starts with effort and hustle. The fact that you haven't seen that in the last two playoff games is, is an indictment of where this defense is at. This defense has given up 29 points in the last two playoff games. Yep. Like, what happened to the 49ers? And compared to KC, he's only given up 13. So, if you're looking at this championship game, like, it really comes down to the defense. That's why, Jacoby, we were saying last up. week, I think the extra week in, in a weird way – benefit San Francisco. Kansas City is coming in full of momentum, yep. right? Uh, outplayed Buffalo. Uh, Miami, a distant memory at this 
point. And, of course, goes into Baltimore. Bang. Didn't play the greatest game. Didn't have to. You know, obviously get held scoreless in the second half. Walk away with the dub. Whereas San Francisco, the one you've talked about a lot, rightfully so, slow starts on offense yep. and yeah. bad starts on defense. Yeah. And what's happened with this particular story is Chase Young, in my opinion, somewhat unfairly, has become sort of the poster, poster. child yeah. for this lack of effort because you can always single out a couple reps. They end up getting on Twitter and going viral, yep. and it makes him look bad. But this has been across the board. If you were to say to me, David Scobie, like, who's got the who's the best two linebackers in football? It's either the Ravens or the Niners. I would go with the Niners. Yep. But they haven't really performed. Right. And, and, and you've got Bosa, you've got Young, you've got Hargrave. They should be getting pressure on the quarterback. they got no pressure on Jordan Love, a little bit on um, on Goff, but they've been underperforming. But to your point, Craig, that helps. It helps to be able to have some tape that, that, that Wills can look at and be like, you guys are not playing well just to keep that edge. And I that's agree. On, and that's on first and ten. You're down seven, right? Your team is trying to figure out what the hell is going on with you, and your star player is pretty much kind of jogging to the ball. Like, he's yeah. supposed to be an impact player. And it, so when you show that tape, you're like, hey, man, this isn't us. This is what we put on tape, and because we put it on tape, that's how we're going to be viewed. So they got to do better, and I think they're going to be ready if for If there's the anything like a gut check or, you know, if you've been embarrassed or yeah. it's out there – I mean, this is the week to get your act together because you have 110 million people watching and you don't want the storyline to be, well, that Chase Young isn't very good. <laughs> you know, that was a bad trade, that kind of thing. But you're right. We went, you know, a month ago, we said on this show and everyone else said it as well, the two best defenses in football were most likely San Francisco's yeah. and Baltimore. Yeah, and the Browns. And while Baltimore did a great job in the second half against Kansas City, San Francisco's defense hasn't done a good job in complete games the last two weeks against both Detroit, not the greatest offense in the world, but a good one, yep. and against Green Bay, a developing offense, and now you're going up against Patrick Mahomes. If San Francisco's defense doesn't show up in the first half, it's going to be it's a over. long night. It's over. And we even talked about how Steve Wicks in the second half had to change his identity yeah. by blitzing, right? They did Because they're usually a bad coverage team, and they allowed their front to get after it. So the fact that they had to make that adjustment because guys like Bosa, I mean, well, Bosa had two sacks, but guys like Chase Young and Hargraves and Armstead, who's dealing with injuries right now, those guys didn't come to the party. That's a problem. Headline number three, it's one of the things I know you as a player want to avoid, and that's a distraction that you got nothing to do with, and it's a family distraction. But it right now is the biggest story going into Super Bowl 58. And unfortunately, Patrick Mahomes Sr. Uh, was arrested in Texas on suspicion of DWI. It would be the third time that he got pinched for a DWI. Uh, that makes it a felony count, meaning he faces possibly up to 10 years in prison. I don't think that's going to happen, of course. Yeah. But the reality that, yeah, as look, I love Patrick Mahomes. Who doesn't? Seems like a great guy. Obviously a great quarterback. But the stuff that his family makes him deal with, and especially now going into Super Bowl week, and his dad clearly has an issue with, with alcohol, yep. but to be picked up for the third time for a DWI on the heels of entering Super Bowl 58 is a problem. Yeah, the problem is this is his third time, right? This isn't something that he just kind of stumbled out of a bar and he got knocked. This is his third time he's been in a situation. Patrick Mahomes, if he does win the Super Bowl, like he has to answer this, right? You know, one thing you love to do after a great – Party is to celebrate with your family. Sure. Now, if there's a picture with his father having a beer with him after winning the Super Bowl, he can't do it. Yeah. So it's an issue. Like the last time the Chiefs had to deal with something like this, and it's a sad story, it's, and you don't make fun of it at all, is the situation with Britt Andy Reed, Reed, Andy's yeah. son, who's a linebackers coach on that Chiefs uh, staff three years ago, who's in a motor vehicle accident, tested almost double the legal limit. And that was before uh, the Super Bowl, too. Yep. Yeah. And they lost that Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl became a side story to the life or death, yep. you know, situation for a young girl that was in a car. But, I mean, if I'm Patrick Mahomes, at some point I ought to be like, I'm going to do with my lunatic brother who's accused of sexual assault earlier this year. Yep. Charges have since been dropped. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to do with my old man. And it's like, guys, like – I can't do it. Like, what can't are we do doing it? here? One of the biggest yeah. weeks of his professional life. And any Mahomes, it should be in the news. It should be the quarterback. You know, and it's that simple. And Patrick Mahomes Sr., we all saw him after the Ravens game. We had a cigar. He, yep. He was, that was the first time he really started speaking out about the team. And, and it's just on the heels but the of that. But, but the caveat is his dad was, was a professional athlete. Yeah, like, that's right. He knows this lifestyle. He knows what comes with it. So he should be more cautious. Well, the issue that, obviously, and I don't, I'm not a therapist or a doctor, although I did minor in it. Uh, the reality is that he's got a problem with alcohol. Yeah. So he's not thinking clearly when it comes to using alcohol, drinking, and then getting behind the wheel of a car. Thankfully, in this case, nobody got hurt, himself included. But it is a distraction, and you can't avoid that. Right. And that means that Patrick Mahomes, when he speaks today, is going to be asked yep. questions about his father. 
that means he's not talking about the game. That is a problem, yeah. potentially, as they get ready for Super Bowl 58. We're getting ready for Super yeah. Bowl 58 as well. We got first of football coming up, and we have a very special anniversary today. And I wonder if you guys know what it is. If you don't, I'll walk you through it right after this. And yes, of course, oh, it's geez. Super Bowl related. <laughs> By the way, today is an anniversary. It is the seventh anniversary, matter of fact, of the greatest comeback in the history of the Super Bowl. That's oh, right. Man. It's 28 to 3. Edelman, make the catch. Make the catch. Make the catch. Oh, oh, I did. Ah. It's three dudes on. I'm still not yeah. quite sure if he caught that ball. He did. Uh, but he did. He did. And uh, all the way back comes to England. And, of course, uh, Shanahan got fired for it. And everybody else should have gotten fired for it. And Matt Ryan never uh, had a, a, an attempt as good as that one to win a Super Bowl. Look at that catch oh my God. one more time. But, yeah, today, today is the anniversary of the greatest comeback in Super Bowl history. And think about this. It was such a good comeback. They made a movie about four old broads in their 80s. 80s for Brady. <laughs> trying to go to Atlanta, to, to, to New Orleans, you everyone. That? It was actually good. Yeah, you I saw watched, watched it. Movie? I you watched it. Both of you guys watched 80 for Brady. Yeah, I watched it. it. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. It, I'm not going to lie yeah, I watched it. What circumstances were you like, you know what I'm going to do this afternoon? I, it's funny. It's funny you asked that question. I was sitting home one day and I go, you know what? I haven't seen Lily Tomlin in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> Mike Tomlin, Lily Tomlin. I was like, yeah. boy, you know who I miss? I miss Rita Moreno. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bang. I, got, go. I killed two Jane birds with one stone. Jane Fonda, of yeah, course. Of course. course. Come oh. on. Anyhow, today is the anniversary <laughs> of it. And Willie and I both saw the movie. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be clear. Were you together? Independent. Okay. Right. We were together. Right. We, yeah, we yeah. were not together. We were not together. If we no. did, it would be two buckets of popcorn. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Cause, well, because I got a hold of my... <laughs> I knew it. Yeah! I knew it. Yeah! Was that extra butter in that yeah. way? Yeah. Uh, time now. <laughs> I should mention that New England won that Super Bowl. Uh, time now. And that's, by the way... The specter of that Super Bowl uh, hangs over the head of Kyle Shanahan. Oh, yeah. And he will be asked about that uh, when he speaks today at one of the uh, many press conferences that takes place. And from that, let's get right into it. First in football, Super Bowl week with Jacoby. First in football, we start with Matt Nagy. He is the offensive coordinator of the Chiefs. And he spoke about who we were just talking about, Kyle Shanahan. And here is what Nagy had to say about Shanahan. Absolutely. He, he does a lot of great stuff. And I think the thing with, with uh, Coach Shanahan is that he, um, he stays creative, does a lot of the stuff that they do really well, and finds different ways to window dress it. And, and he's got great players and great scheme. And when you match that together, you get to this point. So a ton of respect for him. It's not something that's happened one or two years. It's been his whole career. And it's in the run game and the pass game. So there's no question that Shanahan is a good coach. He's got a great reputation. Sure. However, we just showed the, the comeback for the Falcons. Yep. They also had a lead against this team, the Chiefs. Yeah. What would a win mean for Shanahan's reputation? Well, I, it puts him into the upper echelon. Yeah, right now he's a great coach who hasn't yet you know, uh, gotten into uh, the, the winner's circle, right? And because he hasn't, he's never going to be thought of as one of the greatest of all coaches because you have to win, right? And this doesn't put him in, you know, Belichick or Reed. Uh, you know, circles, but it puts him close. It puts him in the circles of that guy knows how to coach a championship team. Right now, he's a guy that knows how to get you there, but isn't good enough to get you over the hump. Uh, so that's our view, Shanahan. And that Super Bowl uh, where they blew the 28-3 lead, you know, it's his Waterloo. That's what haunts him. And he's going to be asked about it because it's the anniversary and because now he's in his, what, second Super Bowl, right? And yep. he's been to a whole bunch of yep. championship games. So that's the question now. And by the way, Andy Reid dealt with this, obviously, when he was in Philadelphia, going to five straight NFC championship games and only one Super Bowl appearance, which is why last week I think I referred to Shanahan as the Philadelphia version of you know, Andy Reid. Because yep. that's a, that was the, that was kind of the bugaboo about Andy Reid. Good enough to get close, not good enough to win. And then they came down to, you know, he doesn't run the ball, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. So I think that's what Shanahan is. I just want to flip the script if I can, and I didn't prepare the guys upstairs for it. Oh, they love that. We forget <laughs> that Matt Nagy is the offensive coordinator yeah. Yeah. of the Kansas City yeah. Chiefs. Right, I remember the last couple of years it was, well, the enemy's the guy, but it's really Andy Reid. 
Matt Nagy was the head coach in this league, obviously with the Chicago Bears, and for a minute looked like he was going to turn the Bears franchise yeah, around. Division title. Obviously yeah. didn't, and he gets fired because it didn't. But don't lose sleep on the fact that Matt Nagy is a hell of a coach. And when they figured out how to beat the Buffalo Bills a couple weeks ago, when they did just enough to beat Baltimore and that great defense two weeks ago, I didn't hear anybody talking about the great job Matt Nagy did. We did hear about the great job that Spagnola did on the defensive side. But Matt Nagy is a hell of a coach. There's a reason he stunk. He wasn't a good coach this season. I mean, they had, they had hiccups all over the place. The fact, I mean, you talk about Christmas game when they lose to the Raiders in the second half. Yeah. They had to make no adjustment. You understand, under Eric Bieniemy, they didn't have the discipline problems. They didn't have the off, the off size. They, had, they didn't have 25 drops on the season. Patrick Mahomes was playing at his best. And then you get Matt Nagy in there. And now they look like they took a step backwards solely because of the distrust with the receivers. You talk about the lack of discipline, the offsides penalties, on and on and on. That's all underneath Matt Nagy's tutelage. So when you talk about Matt Nick, Nagy, the reason he doesn't get the credit because this year is the first time we had legit questions about the Chiefs. Yeah. And it was under him. We didn't have those questions. With but everybody. I'm not going to blame Matt Nagy for dudes dropping balls at Kadarius Tony lining up offsides. It happened. Yeah. It's under his watch. But I'm not going to blame Matt Nagy for those specific things. But if because look, to me, the guy's calling plays and dudes are getting open. Is he calling plays? And the plays? ball's hitting him in the head. That's the thing. Well, Andy, Andy, also, Andy remember Reed Andy calling Andy was asked, they're like, what do you do? Correct. Right? And Correct. Like, no one will ever say that about Andy Reid. Yeah. Andy Reid's got the, he's got the big sheet in front of him and he's oh, calling the plays. Exactly. Yeah. So this is one of those things where it's like, all right, so if you're the offensive coordinator in Andy Reid's system, what do you how do? much influence do you have there? I mean, obviously well, he does That's something. also a good point. I will say this, just you know, seeing the highlights we played there. I don't remember Matt Nagy being bald in Chicago. Well, and he, he is, a hat. He is a bald hat. as a cute ball now. <laughs> he had a hat. He had so a he's had a very tough year is my point. Uh. To you guys, I'm going to you know, double down what you guys said because it's very, very smart. Very smart. <laughs> Moving on to second and football. Travis Kelsey spoke about the Chiefs' journey this year to the Super Bowl and exactly what is at stake in the big game. Here is Mr. Swift. When you look back on it, it was definitely a time of like now or now or never. Like let's let's refocus. Let's let's get this thing going. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, yeah, I guess every journey is different, man. Every journey is different, so it's definitely appreciated that we had to go through that. But um, it don't mean nothing if you don't come out of this this uh, last game with a victory. It don't mean nothing unless you win the Super Bowl. What is at stake for the Chiefs in the big game? Yeah, well, now it's about you know how close to New England are they as a dynasty. Yep. You know, the, the Chiefs can lose this game, and no one's going to think twice about it because they're going to come in next year as one of the favorites to go back right. again because you know they've got Patrick Mahomes, right? You know, if Kelsey retired, I suppose that might throw a couple wrinkles into those plans. If Reed retired, which is, you know, out there a little bit, that would certainly throw wrinkles in it. But they got Mahomes, that's all that really matters. So, it's weird. Like, if San Francisco doesn't win the Super Bowl, I know all the storylines right now. Yep. Brock Purdy isn't good enough. Kyle Shannon. Uh, the defense can't be trusted. And Kyle Shannon just isn't that guy to get you over the hump. If Kansas City loses, it's going to be, ah, yeah. it's all right. Yeah, they yeah. weren't that good anyway. Ah. Yeah. They had a great ah. run. Yeah, they've been to four of them now. Like, like they got nothing to lose, really, yeah. other than, you know, kind of immortality and a team that legitimately can make you think about the New England dynasty. And it's funny because if you turn on Sports Talk Radio or TV, coast to coast, for the last few years, there's invariably a show that says, well, you know, sports today, you know, the dynasty's dead. And I'm thinking to myself, it couldn't be more alive <laughs> yeah, in, in sports today, right? Yeah, seriously. Uh, but that's the narrative that's out there. So uh, from that standpoint, Kansas City can lose this. And while it'll hurt in Kansas City, and for Chiefs fans, obviously, no parade, it's not that big a deal. Yeah, listen, I think one thing I, Patrick Mahomes and probably Andy Reid is telling this team, don't take this time for granted because you don't no guarantee you're going to go back, right? It's like the Detroit thing and Coach Campbell yeah, saying, yeah, like, truth be told, we may never get back. Because we've sat up here time and time and talked about how different the AFC is going to be next year with healthy quarterbacks. Sure. We talked about Aaron Rodgers, Josh, you know, Josh Allen, <coughs> on and on. Yeah. This may not be an easy road for the Chiefs next year. Well, so, look, I think the road only gets harder for everybody in the AFC uh, right. for uh, all right. the obvious reasons. Harbaugh coaching now. Yep. You know, with Justin Herbert, Aaron Rodgers, if he's healthy, that's another wrinkle. Uh, obviously, you already got Josh Burrow. Allen. Joe Burrow Burrow's comes back. back. You know, Lamar Jackson now on a mission, yep. you know, because of what happened this year. So, 
yeah, I mean, it gets harder, not easier. I think that I'm going to say something that no one wants to hear, and that is oh. if the Chiefs lose, still a very successful season. Yeah. You went on the road in the playoffs and beat the Bills. You went on the road to Baltimore, and we all thought Baltimore was going to win that game, and yeah. then you beat the Ravens. Like, some people are like, oh, you're either the champions or you're a failure, right? But I, but I attest their, their win streak in the playoffs solely on Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, because the energy and the chip of the shoulder they're playing with. Because at the end of the day, yeah, Pacheco, the offense goes through him, and defensively they've been stopped. Let's also make sure if we're going to give credit for Kansas City getting there, and we should. Yes. And it's Mahomes and Kelsey. You also have to give credit to Todd Munkin, the offensive coordinator <laughs> of Baltimore, for, for being maybe the, the dumbest, dumbest coordinator yeah. in the history he of Jan- the the playoff game. success. Yeah, let's Kelsey, make, sure, Mahomes, make sure he gets a ring. Yeah. Uh, Todd Munkin, <laughs> I know he hasn't picked up his phone yet since that game. <laughs> oh, no. I know that for a fact. Oh, you, no. you noticed how there wasn't a single storyline the last two weeks of Todd Munkin interviewing oh, for head yeah. coaching no. jobs? No. Yeah, now no. you know why. He's like, any day now, they're going to call. <laughs> swear. Any Moving day. on to third and football and another coach, Bill wow. Belichick. Is that a letter? He doesn't have a job. and He took out this full-page ad in the Boston Globe. <laughs> and here is a piece from it, quote, <sighs> No one in America are pro sports fans as passionate as Wingland Live. Six Six times you packed Boston by the million for parades. You may have enjoyed my fashion sense and press conferences. I love coaching here, and together we experience some amazing moments. Okay, whatever. What does Bill Belichick do this football season? First off, he forgot that nobody reads newspapers anymore. Yeah. Uh, so that was just a waste <laughs> yes. of money. That's fair. Um, it was odd. It was all odd. I, I'm, I'm frankly, I am shocked that Bill Belichick, A, only interviewed in one place that we know of, at least, yep. in Atlanta, and they interviewed 14 other people uh, before they decided that Raheem Morris was going to be their new head coach. Uh, and I'm beyond baffled that he's not going to be a head coach in the NFL. I will tell you this, you know, it's becoming a young man's game, not an older man's game, that's for sure. But you got to figure that there's a team out there willing to give him the, the open, empty check, the blank checkbook, right? And say, you represent competency, and that's what my franchise needs. And the fact that of the, what, seven, eight, nine yep. coaching changes that took place this particular offseason, I can't believe, A, he only had one interview, and B, he's not coaching this year. Yeah, I mean, it's an indictment on how the league views Bill Belichick. He's stale, he's old, he hasn't won as of late, and valid, he's arguably going to go down as one of the greatest head coaches of all time. Nobody wants him, because if you wanted him, you, you had an opportunity. Pa- Carolina Panthers, for Christ's sakes, yeah. Seahawks, for Christ's sakes, like, those are friends, organizations you say, hey, do anything and everything you want, just bring us, you know, bring us the Super Bowl. He didn't do it. So, I think right now, he's going to have to go into a PR campaign of just showing well, that he's like I think there's jobs he didn't want, like the commander's job, yeah, for Panthers example. Job. I don't think you like, want that. I'm not going to a place that's dysfunctional. So what doesn't made the quarterback. job so attractive? I don't know. It's a great question. They must think that they have access, you know, to the ability to make a trade for a quarterback. I, that's a very good question. I don't have the answer to that. But th- we, this will be the first year in most of our lifetimes yeah. that Bill Belichick is not on the sideline of an NFL team going into the fall. So quickly, don't and you think? Hear, he, wait, do you hear that? What's that static? Oh, that's the violence. It's the smallest violin oh, okay. in the world. I think he'll be okay. <laughs> but don't you think he has to go in a PR campaign and change how they view him, how the league views him? I just, he's just not <laughs> that guy. It's like, the smallest not, violin. Hey, look. <laughs> for a parrot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I worry about Bill Belichick. Ugh. He should be. Uh, I look, I think he's a great coach. I think he should be in the NFL. I think a year from now, there will be a number of teams courting him. The a New York year. Giants, so you for see him one. Out this year. It could I be less than a year. I think he sits out if the year. If you are a coach on the hot Go seat, ahead. having Belichick just out there unemployed affects your position Except for one. and your safety. There's only one it doesn't. Who? And that's Robert Sala because Bill Belichick hates the Jets yeah. organization. And no joke, Woody Johnson could say, look, here, here's, all my, here's all the money I got. Briggs truck. And he would say no to it. Robert Sala is the only coach who's on the hot seat that doesn't have to worry about Bill Belichick because Bill hates green. I don't know why. (laughs) I have no idea why or what happened, but Bill Belichick despises the New York Jet organization and it's mutual, douche. We don't like you either. But you you said it last week. The NFL needs villains. And the fact that this villain is – Like a villain without a job is is a bad action movie. Really? Like what are you talking about? Like how how is this possible? Uh, I I didn't want to commit crime again. (laughs) But they brought me back in. An unemployed villain? Oh, it's hard. Uh, We got much more Super Bowl 58 stuff (laughs) coming your way, including can Brock Purdy overcome a bad start? 
It's a new segment we call, oh, What You Gonna Do? What You Gonna, gonna Do? Something like that. Uh, it's coming up now. We're yeah, very excited We'll about finish it when you come yeah. back. As we celebrate Black History Month, I'd like to highlight one of the greatest lives ever lived and a man that should be discussed as having had one of the richest lives in American history, the great Paul Robeson. Born before the turn of the 20th century, Paul Robeson was just the third black person ever to attend Rutgers University. And despite dealing with rampant racism while he was there, he was a two-time All-American football player considered by Walter Camp to be the greatest defensive end ever at the time. He was also his class valedictorian. In the 50 years that followed, Mr. Robeson went to Columbia Law, became a central figure in the Harlem Renaissance, was one of America's most renowned stage and film actors, advocate for civil rights domestically and abroad, was surveilled and harassed and blackballed by the FBI and his own government, had his rights to travel stripped and then restored by the Supreme Court, became a newspaper publisher and recorded nearly 300 songs. Paul Robeson, one of the most important and oft forgotten Americans to ever live. Uh, and of course, throughout the entire month of February, everybody here on FS1, as we did a year ago and we'll always do, honoring uh, men and women of color uh, during a Black History Month. And great job there by Nick with Paul Robeson. We got Willie Colon, of course. We got Jacobs coming up in a little bit. Uh, my main man, Plaxico Burris, is going to join us as well. But it's time for a new segment on this show. Yeah. A new segment called, What, what You Gonna Do? I think you'll understand how it goes. It goes a little something like this. Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? If you throw two first half interceptions. Okay. Oh. Uh, I don't see that happening. Listen, Brock yeah. had a rocky start the last two playoff games, but you have to think. Right now, the Super Bowl, he's gonna be a lot more polished. This offense is gonna be a lot more mainstream. What he's gonna do? I don't know what the hell he's gonna do. Well, <laughs> I don't know. If they were ever gonna go to Sam Donald, they would have done it in the Detroit game. Oh yeah, they're not yeah, going to Sam Donald. Sam Donald. Sam, Sam, no, bitch yeah. Brock Purdy. No, and by the way, I, I know there were people I'm sure watching those two playoff games, especially the Green Bay game, saying, "Hey, get Sam Donald in the game." Yeah. Brock Purdy is the starting quarterback. If he throws two first half interceptions, here's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get Shanahan on the sideline with that stoic. Mm. We're going to be fine. Yeah. We'll little, be just fine. little rain cloud yeah. over his head. We're going to be fine. Yeah, that's what, that's what he does. That's I, I honestly think that this, this hypothetical scenario isn't that bad because the last two playoff games, he's essentially played terribly in the first half. That's right. So we've been there before. We'll turn around. And yeah, I can't envision, and I, we could obviously be dead wrong, that that offense is going to struggle out of no. the gate at the level they struggled both against Detroit and against Green Bay. So I think they'll be just fine. Hopefully he doesn't throw two picks. Number two, ready? Pat Mahomes, oh, Pat Mahomes. Mahomes. What, what you gonna, gonna do? What, what you gonna, gonna do, do when? if your wide receivers drop multiple balls in this game? Oh. Uh, run the ball. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. You gotta stop throwing and run the hell out the football. You go 13 personnel, three tight ends, that running back, you go downhill with Isaiah Pacheco. So they just gonna stop Stop it's, 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 it's Kelsey, it's Noah Gray, and Pacheco, and All no day. one else gets it gets its heart. Well, it doesn't seem like Kadarius Tony's going to be playing in the shock. Yeah. Oh, we're in the Super Bowl, oh. and he of course uh, was uh, you know primo uno when it came to guys dropping balls in big spots. Was he on the plane? Did you see him on the plane? I did not see oh, him on no. the plane. No. <laughs> Uh, I assume he's not in Vegas, <laughs> but that has been unconfirmed as of right now. And I'm sure, yeah, we'll find out later today the plans for Kadarius Tony and what Super Bowl party he's going to be at. <laughs> right. Watching the game, we'll you could probably get you could probably get a couple grand. Yeah, I'm sure if somebody wants to host. Appearance. Am I a party? All right, number three, you ready to go? It? Kansas City, City Kansas, Kansas City. City. What, what you gonna, gonna do? do? What, what you gonna, gonna do? If you can't stop Christian McCaffrey oh. from running the football, lose. Yes. Lose. Yes. Lose because they had trouble stopping the Bills running attack. Yep. And if they have the same sort of problems, especially early on in the game, when now you're, the defense is on the field for a long time, they have complete control of the game, they're, they're long drives, run the ball at will, that is a huge problem for this defense. I'm with you. If they can't stop the run game, it's over. Super Bowl goes to the Niners. I and I do it. think San Francisco will not make the same mistake as Baltimore, and they will make sure there's a heavy dose of running the, the football. Exactly. Do you think Cal Shanahan? 
Lions not going not to blow another huge lead by throwing the ball to Well, much? that does bring us well, to the, the very question. next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to the next one. And the next one is... Shout your hand, shout your hand. What you going to do? What you going to do? If you have a double-digit point lead in the fourth quarter... <laughs> you have to prove you can close the game. Woo! Bottom line. Ping, 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 <laughs> ping. <laughs> Do you see the graphic they put up in oh, the Super man. Bowl yeah. in the fourth quarter in overtime? His teams have been outscored 46 to nothing. Ooh. Yikes. Think about that. In the That's fourth quarter in overtime, winning time in the Super Bowl, his teams have been outscored 46 to nothing. I mean, giving up 46 points in itself yeah, is terrible. But one of his strengths is it, one of his strengths during the game is the ability to adjust. So yeah. hopefully he's able to do that. If he does go up ahead and he's up by two scores, man, you got to finish the game. You got to be able to close the game. Yeah, and listen, one. he can't avoid that when you're looking at your screen right now. The bottom doesn't He cannot real. avoid that. Is right? that real? 46 to nothing in the fourth quarter in overtime in two games? That's it's crazy. It really, it really is crazy, but he can't avoid it. And this is why we talk about where does Shanahan kind of rank amongst active coaches. You know, he's not Belichick, who's no longer active. He's not Andy Reid, who's uh, like now the kind of older, elder statesman yep. of all coaches in the NFL. He's the oldest actual coach right now with Belichick uh, sitting out for the upcoming year. But he's got to answer these questions. And by the way, it's going to be every day this week at different press conferences. He's going to have to answer that. And the bottom line, nobody's out, right? Purdy, Debo, IU, Kittle, they're everybody's all Everybody's good to go. Yes, go. So there's no question mark about this team. Yeah. Are they going to be healthy? They're all healthy right now. I mean, McCaffrey has a little neck thing, but he'll be ready to go. The That's biggest the question I have for them, we'll get into this throughout the week, is I don't trust their field goal kicker Moody? at all. Oh, I don't Moody. trust Moody as far as I can throw him. Uh, and I know you could say, well, how do you trust Brock Purdy? I saw the comebacks, right? Sure. So I believe he can now do that on the biggest of stages. If this comes down, and it could, That's to a point. field goal game, woo-wee, yeah. I don't trust that Moody at all. <laughs> and it better not come down to Moody from 46, because I can tell you right now, <laughs> Wide left. That's how that's going to go. We got a couple more here if you guys are ready. Who is it? Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City. City. What, what you going to do? What you going to do? If the Niners score more than 20 points in this game, because oh. when Kansas City allows more than 20 points this year, regular season and playoffs, they are three and six. When they hold the opponent to under 20 points, they are undefeated. Well, this is what you got to understand. One thing the 49ers do, they get in that pistol formation, that empty set, and they dink and dunk their way to uh, an end zone. It's going to be this Kansas City pass rush that has to be able to get to Brock, uh, Brock Purdy. If not, the game's going to be over early. Bottom line. Yep, I'm with you on that. But by the way, I can't see how San Francisco doesn't, doesn't score yeah, 20 the same thing. I'm not saying that, that equates to a guaranteed W, but I'd be shocked. We're if they don't score more than 20 points. Well, they didn't do nothing in the second half against Baltimore. I know. Five punts. That was a real thing. Yeah, Kansas City was held scoreless in that second half. That is right. But I, I don't think San Francisco is going to be held scoreless for a half or even a quarter in this game. So that is the big number, 20. I got one more for you. Ready? Willie really Colon. Really what you going to do? What you going to do? What what you gonna do? do? Oh, okay. If your cousin eats all the wings and there ain't none left at halftime. Uh, order some more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Bottom yeah. line. Look at that. Dude, Kobe did a hell of a job back yeah. there. Yeah. There's going to be no shortage of wings <laughs> yeah. in this house. Yeah. There's going to be no, no shortage we, of wings in this house. We food up the yeah. <laughs> Willie's hosting, a, Willie's hosting a party. I, I know. A party. I'm just hoping he's got another tray of those jerk wings for us on Monday. Oh, I, I, got, my, I got my eye on those. I got you. I promise you going to get some. You just put a couple aside of for me. Uh, a couple like, of uh, like Flats. three. Flats. Flats. Dozen. Flats. Flats. <laughs> Flats. <laughs> All right. Coming up, much more Super Bowl 58 coverage. Of course, uh, Count Patrick Mahomes dominate a defense that over the last two weeks has been, by their own words, embarrassing. Ooh. We'll get into that. And we even have some Dallas Cowboys just coming up for you oh. uh, right after this. And a young man, a young man named Plaxico Burris joins us live right after this what? on FS1. Back to the Carton Show. Great to have our main man, Mr. Plaxico what? Burris, joining us. Yeah. Hey, Plax, up top with the left. <laughs> up top with the left. Oh, I can't get it up. I'll take that one now. <laughs> Plax is recuperating from a uh, minor of uh, surgery on his left shoulder, but uh, all good. And I noticed on his right hand tonight, for the first time in the history of the Carton Show, Mr. Burris has gone to the vault. Yeah. Show it. There Let's it see is. it. Let's see it. Oh, Let's see yeah. It. 
Super Bowl man. week. It's, yes. only, it's, yeah. all, it's only right. If you played in the game and you had an opportunity to play in the game and win one, this is the this only is the week that you can it bring is. it out, and it's acceptable. I have to agree with that. Willie, tomorrow maybe you rock yours, yes? Sure, no problem. Unless your knuckles have gotten too fat yeah. and you can't fit them oh, on them. Cute. Unnecessary oh, roughness. <laughs> Unnecessary roughness. Fat knuckle joke? Yeah. Uh, un- unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Shame for Anyhow, the knuckles. Between these guys, we have two Super Bowl rings. Uh, it's a great to have their inside this entire week. And from that, we go over to Jacoby for all your mid-show headlines. Super Bowl 58, go ahead. First headline involves the Chiefs and the Niners arriving in Los A. Where are they? Las yeah, Vegas. Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Vegas. That's where they are. Deplaning right now. And George Kittle, the tight end for the Niners, spoke about sort of the environment in Vegas and focusing on the game. Just do what you've been doing the whole season. Don't make anything up. Like, that's my thing. Like, yeah, Vegas, brought, you know, the street, the strip, the, all the lights. It is what it is. But what's really cool would be winning the Super Bowl. Anything else yes. before that is who cares, really. So, Willie, we'll start with you here. You, both yeah. of you guys played in Super Bowls. How will the fact that this is in Vegas impact the actual game? Well, you need, first got to recognize Vegas is a lot more fun once you win the Super Bowl. Let's uh, start there. Like, yeah. so as much as you want to. so is Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway so, my, so my point is you, you really got to get these guys who haven't been here uh, to dial in and understand your family can't be a distraction. The ticket, you know, everybody's going to have a ticket request. That can't be a distraction. You got to become really selfish at this time because you lose this game knowing that you may not, never be back in your life. You'll regret it if you're not locked in. So these guys are going to be prepared. I know Andy Reid, uh, excuse me, Shanahan, they're going to tell them we was here before and we lost. Let's not lose again. Yeah, just like Kittle said, man, you just stick to your regular routine during the season. You don't just get to the Super Bowl and you start doing everything different. You know, you do everything uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday during the regular season. That's you're going to do in the Super Bowl. But I will say, you know, being in Las Vegas, there are a lot of added sure. distractions, the media requests, appearances, different things like that. I mean, your phone is constantly ringing. Your agent's always calling you. So you're turning down, uh, can, can you show up to this school or can, can, can you make this appearance for two hours? And as a player, you just say, you know what? I can't do it this week. Mm. I want you to focus on the Super Bowl. Right. And try now, if you already come back next week, we can talk yeah, about it, but yeah. not this week. Do you guys actually practice Super Bowl week? Oh, yeah. Like legitimately, yeah. like break a sweat practice? Nothing changes. It's, like, regular, it's regular, regular work week. Nothing changes. The issue for a lot of guys, and like Plaque said, is the distraction from the media. Because usually, you know, when we have walkthrough, we're not really meeting with the media. Some teams do, but right. you're meeting with the media before, after, on your way to the Super Bowl, so to the, when you land in it. Like, it's constant media attention. So that's when you be like, all right, enough already. That's when it gets a little good. Right, because for those, like, in New York is different, obviously, yeah. than any other market. So in New York, for example... Maybe there's 20 guys uh, from the media that you see every day travel with the team or cover the games home and away. You know all familiar faces. You get to a Super Bowl, and all of a sudden that 20 just became 80. And now you got guys pulling at you who you've never met before. You don't know. And while I'm sure they're good guys, you're like – Where's my New York Post beat before? <laughs> and it's just like what happened to me at the Super Bowl when I when I kind of walked through the hotel and made that prediction. Right. Because everybody, the media is from every country. Correct. Right. And we don't understand that until you get there. And media, they're just walking around the hotel. Tell the story again real yeah. quick for those of you And I get know. off the bus, and right. I get off the bus, and I walk through the hotel, and the guy's like, hey, Plex, you got a, any predictions for the game? I'm like, yeah, we're going to 23-17. And the next day, it was oh. like national headlines. Plaxico Burr is guaranteed. I'm on the front page of the post. And John Merrill's calling me. And <laughs> uh, Tom Coughlin's calling me. What happened? They say, who did you speak to? I said, I didn't speak to anybody. The guy asked me a question. I, I gave him an answer. And the next, next thing you know, it was international headlines. So. <laughs> and he's right. Like, right. You've been talking to, like, Eduardo from Venezuela. Like, right. who clearly <laughs> doesn't know anything other than Tom Brady. Yeah. Right? So you're like, all right, why am I swimming this guy, giving this guy this much time? But that one little thing cause spins a million times over, and now you're the guy that we, we all We all, all, and I include myself in this, when the gal from Noticias del Mundo yeah. uh, shows up in the tight pants, we're like, anything else you want to know? And there's a bunch of them this time. Like, you, a lot of times when you get interviewed, you just got to be like, yep, you just got to keep eyes up, eyes forward. You guys are Super Bowl veterans, but see, Craig and I, we're Super Bowl media veterans. Yes. And we're looking for anything to talk about. Yeah. Anything. You make a prediction, that is headline news. We'll get half an hour out of that. Because from a media standpoint, and I was blessed as you are, I've been to a lot of Super Bowls in the week leading up to it, is all the players that you ordinarily would never have access to talk to, which you want to talk to, whether as a fan or just the interest 
interesting, you know, backstories, whatever it is. And it's always connected to a pitch of something. Mm. And I'll never forget Tim Tebow, who I adored, best looking guy I've ever met in all sports, oh. was pitching avocados grown in Mexico. All right? That was, the, that was the product that he was endorsing, right? Uh -huh. So we're the first interview he does the entire week to promote guacamole, basically. So they bring a big bowl of guacamole and some chips. Plaques, I'm elbow deep <laughs> in, in the guac, right? The, the interview ends. Thank you so much, Tim. Great meeting you. Appreciate you. And then as people start whispering, and I'm like, there's something going on. Yeah. And, and they're talking about me because they're pointing. <laughs> and a gal comes over to me and she goes, uh, Craig, we have a little situation. Tim's doing 40 more interviews. We kind of need the guac because <laughs> that's what we're promoting. And I go, sweetheart, I'm elbow deep. <laughs> I got knuckle hairs in this guac. Yeah. But if you want it, you can. Oh, <laughs> what did they do? <laughs> they took it to the next they, one. Oh, <laughs> they didn't have a choice. That's it. Well, did I they know you had your use elbow deep? Oh, I mean, it was obvious, yeah. <laughs> like, I rolled them up, Will. I was like, I'm all in. It's 7 in the morning, and I got free guac. I'm your huckleberry. You so that's the kind of stuff that happens Super Bowl week that you look back on and remember fondly. So all good. Let's move on to our second headline. Involves Super Bowl. It involves the defense for the Niners <coughs> that has struggled thus far in the playoffs. Their defensive coordinator, Steve Willis, had some really interesting sound about his defense. I think you really have to ask them individually. Uh, collectively, as a team, I can tell you, as a defense, it's unacceptable. So we got to make sure that we play every down as if it's going to be the difference in the ball game. It, it wasn't to our standard. And those guys understand and know that, and quite honestly, it was embarrassing. So, nice. Craig, do you expect this defense to play differently in the Super Bowl? I mean, I think they're going to play better. And I know we're all focused on Chase Young as having not, you know, kind of delivered the goods because we, you know, someone released a couple videos of him kind of being manhandled by the offensive line, specifically of the Detroit Lions last week. Uh, yeah, like it's weird to me because Detroit's a good football team. No one's going to argue that. Green Bay is on the rise. No one's going to argue that. But the fact that those two offenses – really played with the San Francisco Dude. defense as if they weren't a legitimate top five defense was shocking, I think, to all of us. You know, you can, you can talk about Brock Purdy maybe not playing well in certain situations. You've talked all year that you don't trust him outside or if the weather gets bad because he just hasn't had enough opportunities to prove that he can be counted on. So you've been proven right on that. But I think if you said to any of us that San Francisco defense, especially in the Green Bay game on that Saturday night, I was shocked that they came out so poorly. Yeah, I was shocked. And I was more shocked in the Detroit game because that Detroit offensive line owned the line of scrimmage. When you see yep. Hargraves and you see those guys get pushed off the ball. And when Schlaff was here, he said it, you know, for offensive linemen, our porn is moving a man from A to B. We right. talked about that. Right. And when you turn on that first half of that tape, that's all that Detroit line did. And not even that, it was their impact players not mm -hmm. making a play when it counted to most. Like Chase Young wasn't brought here to be a choir boy. He was supposed to be here to be a disruptor and kind of help Bosa get after the quarterback he didn't do that and so when you see time after time of plays like this like this is indicative because there goes Chase Young right here this is a touchdown right here's a chance for you to get a stop before the first down and you let that happen this yeah. is a team searching for an answer like if he gets a big time tackle maybe it's a fumble ball goes the other way this can be the momentum swing when the Niners happen this is in the second quarter of the game first and ten yeah so like when you see your star players your impact players do things like that on tape that's who you are right the now. thing that sucks about that if you guys want to show it one more time is what oh, you're man. talking about at the very end Chase Young who kind of like he's walking in the yeah. park You'll see him kind of come in the bottom of your screen right there. But look at everybody else hustling and like, trying to get like, there. Eh, what at 99, touch? what the hell are you doing? Yeah, go ahead, Plax. I mean, the most alarming thing for me when I look at this play is when Chase Young came into this league, yeah, he was a high motor Yes, guy. he was. Yeah. Yeah. He was he, he was chasing down runs from the backside, uh, getting stripped sacks, fumbles, sacks on the quarterback. I don't I don't know what, what has happened to him over the past couple of years. Maybe it's the, the knee injury. Sure. But it's just playing a factor in it. But if I'm Steve Wilkes, and if you're any defensive coordinator right now, coming off of, of NFC Championship game, and you're standing in front of the podium and you're talking about your defense giving effort, yes, that is about not what? where you want to be no. going into the Super Bowl. And in this defense, they've given up, what, 158 yards average 
yep. on the ground yeah. ooh, against the Packers and the Lions, and they're almost giving up six yards a carry. If this was the regular season, that's dead last in football. And Kansas so, City's got a running attack that oh, they yeah, believe yeah, in now yeah, with yeah. Isaiah Pacheco. And, and the thing about Steve Wilkes is that, you know, he wants to play his own coverage. He wants to play a lot of too high, and he wants Chase Young and those guys, Nick Bosa, to get to the quarterback. But, listen, if you're not getting pressure on the quarterback and you're playing two high safeties and, and, that's, and they're running the football down your throat, you're going to have to make some adjustments on defense and maybe play some man-to-man, put eight and in the box. they did the second half of that yeah, game. Because yeah, because if you can't stop the run it's a out of seven-man box with two high because you, you, you want to stop the deep pass, then you got a problem. Well, here's the difference, though. Kansas City doesn't throw the ball deep, really, anymore. No. Uh, you know, maybe you know, 15 yards to Kelsey, 20 yards, and they may take one or two shots. But they're no longer a deep threat offense. Like you said a little bit ago, and it's, it seems like totally whack. They were saying this about a Mahomes-led offense. It is dink and dunk now. Like, he had more than half of his passes last week against Baltimore. We're at the line of scrimmage or no more than five yards down the field. Right. So the offense has changed. Well, well, it had to change, right? Because right now they don't have a legit <coughs> number one outside receiver. Outside of Kelsey, they don't. And MBS has come on late. Um, and that's just kind of Mahomes trusting those guys. But overall, what this offense looks like is it goes through Pacheco. It goes through that 13 personnel. It goes through because they, they're so focused on Travis Kelsey. Yeah. And now they have two other tight ends who Let me ask you guys this question. When you hear Wilkes come out and say that, you know, we were embarrassing and the effort was inexcusable, his words, not mine, and we all agree with it. You guys as players have pointed out, you know, that you know, backing up those statements. How much of that do you think is the notion that Shanahan earlier this year threw him under the bus, Steve Wilkes, by saying our defense is not getting the job done and it starts with our coordinator and it's on Wilkes? Now you have Wilkes coming out going, our defense was embarrassing and inexcusable. Part of that, that byplay between Shanahan and Steve Wilkes seems like it's a powder keg. Well, one thing that he said that I found really interesting is, remember the, the very beginning of that quote that we played? He goes, well, you're going to have to ask those players individually. Yeah. It was Mike like, Tomlin approach. It was like, wait a second, what now? Yeah. Like, it's like, it's yeah. not, oh, we as a group need to get together. We need to play better. Like, we're well, a team. It's the same way Shanahan pointed the finger at Wilkes. Wilkes is being like, well, you got to ask those go players. Tell, go talk to Chase if you yeah, want to yeah, know what's yeah. going on. Because yeah. effort has nothing to do with scheme and talent. It's just yeah. all heart and will. It's, it's understanding and you got to make a play when, you're, when your feet is on the grass. I'll tell you what, though. Uh, if San Francisco's defense does show up, quote-unquote, and play their best football, this game's a wrap. Like, if, if that defense shows up the way they can on paper and the way they did for the first few months of this season, this could get ugly against Kansas City very quickly. I mean, let's be honest. They're supposed to look, look, have lost both of those football games. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, you sit here and say, what, uh, it was an unwinnable game. Unwinnable game. Detroit game. That's Detroit right. Lions going into San Francisco. <laughs> and it's a game that they actually should have won. I agree. And yeah. when, I, when I sit here and listen to Steve Wilkes and he's talking about his defense, it, it, it's, it's not excusable. It's not embarrassing. I mean, the Detroit Lions were better than you on that day. Yes, they were. Uh, it was a 17-point lead. Flat out. They were yeah. better than you accepted. It, 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 uh, effort comes, in, comes into play. But if you look at the, the way that they pushed around that defense, that defensive front, that's the. I'm with you, the Plax. I would have a real concern if I need to find a way to motivate my guys to play in an NFC championship. Ball. But not even that. Like, like second, what is that? The second half of that Lions game versus the Niners, like, Josh Reynolds added to that win. Like, Josh Reynolds had a bunch of key drops in that game yeah. that kind of helped the Niners uh, the, out. The two. Right? Well, the yeah, one yeah. coming across the field on third down, and, of course, the fourth to two. He catches those balls the the ball game. Yeah, but I'm with Plax, man. Yeah. If I got to worry about my guys showing effort to get to a Super Bowl, Super Bowl. what the hell are they going to do in the Super Bowl? Exactly. Dominate. <laughs> Moving on to our final headline. Now, this is an interesting piece of news over the weekend. Patrick Mahomes Sr., Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback's oh, father. That's a tough look right there. He was yeah. arrested on suspicion of DUI. This yeah. was his third charge of DUI, if he is actually convicted. And can, how does this affect Mahomes, and how does this distract the Chiefs? It's weird because Mahomes has dealt with family crap, you know, for a while now, specifically around his brother. Yep. Uh, he was accused of sexual assault, and we all saw the video. And to be fair, the charges, I believe, were dropped in that case, so he's clean right now. And this is the third time, I guess, that his old man has had a problem with drinking and driving. Clearly, he has an issue with alcohol, and that should be taken seriously, not mocked or poked fun at. It's a problem. 
But in a weird way, Mahomes has been able to kind of, you know, deafen all that noise and go play great football, regardless Mm -hmm. of the nonsense that circles him. And as much as I have no rooting interest, I do think San Francisco wins the Super Bowl. As just a, a person... Yo, know, I feel bad for Patrick Mahomes that his family collectively keeps putting him in these uncomfortable situations, right? He does nothing wrong. He lives his life apparently the right way, doesn't get in trouble, doesn't you know, cause humiliation or embarrassment to his family or the organization. But I know it's going to happen this week because it's the Super Bowl. Yeah. He's going to be asked about his dad. Yeah. And being asked about your father quote-unquote, embarrassing you has got to be the toughest question any kid has ever had to answer. Well, you're right. You know, when it comes to family, man, especially Patrick Mahomes, since he's kind of decorated as the best quarterback in the league and the sports talk world, we look for little chinks in the armor. And when it comes to your family and it's already out and you can't defend it, it hurts hurts more, right? Because you can't defend your brother's antics. You can't defend how annoying your wife is. You can't even defend that your your goddamn dad is now plastered all over America as a drunk. Right. Like that has nothing to do with football. Or it's, you. Or you. That's just all your family. So it's, 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 it's you got to have empty for a man, but he's been doing a hell of a job. Of I, got, I have a cool. question, Plax. Uh, Let me set this up for you because this isn't the only thing that's sort of like around the Chiefs right now heading into the game. If you look at all the things that are being discussed around the Chiefs, there could potentially be distractions. There's a pretty long list. You've got Reed and Kelsey retirement talk. you got the whole Taylor Swift thing. You got Mahomes Theater getting arrested, Kadarius Tony drama. Right. Like, Plax, do you think that all this collectively can affect the team heading into the big game? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, if it was during a regular season, you know, it, it, it would be something that was not magnified as much as it right. is because it's the timing of everything. The Kadarius Tony drama, from what I understand, he was like a healthy scratch. Yep, that's right. You know, during the uh, championship game. And it's unfortunate for, for Patrick Mahomes because. This story with his dad, it takes away from how they got to the Super Bowl. Right. You know, going to Buffalo, nobody thought they were going to win that game. Obviously, going into Baltimore, nobody thought they was going to win that game. And now, as you know, tomorrow is National Media Day. Yes. And he's going to have to sit in front of all those reporters and all those cameras and answer questions about his father, right. about something that has happened. And it's going to take away from him and his team in the game. And he's going to have to answer it and deal yeah, with it. Yeah, and the way this works, for those of you that don't know, is the Kansas City Chiefs PR staff is going to make an attempt. They won't be successful no, at it no. in telling reporters uh, his dad's off limits. I want to talk about and the they game. will say that. Uh, and it doesn't matter don't care. because this is such a different type of scenario. And these guys have experienced as players, probably even more you than Willie, with all due respect, yeah, yeah. just as an offensive lineman versus a skill position player. Sure. There will be 90 people with microphones, and some of those people are trying to make a name for themselves by asking the gotcha question, right, or asking silly questions, which sometimes are funny and entertaining. But no one's going to listen to the Kansas City PR staff saying, do not ask about his dad because it's my job to ask because it's news, much like it was, unfortunately, with Andy Reid's son three years ago and driving into the influence and having that accident. It is a storyline because you just said, Plax, it's the Super Bowl. If this were a Sunday afternoon in October, maybe one of the beat yeah. reporters pulls him aside and says, hey, do you want to give me a comment I can use? And that's it. But at the Super Bowl, everything's magnified. And unfortunately, you know, his dad has an issue with booze, uh, got, you know, nabbed. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. It wasn't an accident. But it's a storyline because we're trying to figure out, and let's just keep it real and 100 on the show. Half of America gambles now. Yeah. And now the idea is I'm looking for an edge. I'm looking for a distraction. I'm looking for some reason why I should fade Kansas City and bet on San Francisco. And I'm going to come up with anything I can come up with to give me kind of the backing to make my wager against Mahomes, whether that's player props, whether that's San Francisco just as a wager in the game. Mm. And I want to know as much as possible about this scenario because I guarantee you the last 24 hours he's been on the phone, right? Oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's his father. 
Yeah, and then on top of that, you have reporters asking about his childhood, how much you're dating. Like, it, it gets on yeah, and on, yeah. and people start digging this time of year, yep. especially this this week. But I think for Patrick Mahomes, he's done a great job of kind of neutralizing all that. And yep. I think he'll know how to handle this. Yeah, and if there is a – because of the experience, having been to multiple Super Bowls, yeah. and, yes, the brother stuff that was out there and has been out there for a while, and it seems like it has never affected his play – but, man, when it's your dad, it's different. 100%. Much like if it's your child, it's different. If it's your wacko brother, well, my gut is that he's yeah. always been that way. <laughs> so you're kind of used to those shenanigans, yeah. right, like dancing on Sean Taylor's number. Right. right? And, like, things like that, yeah. that became storylines. Mm -hmm. Through his brother, you can yeah. watch those away. Your dad yeah. being in trouble and being an addict uh, is something that's hard to say. I mean, but for him, I mean, everybody knows that, you know, we, we have, you know, different issues with your family, different sure. things like that. It's his dad. I'm pretty sure, you know, he, he idolizes him, and that's his hero growing up. But put, your, put yourself in Patrick Mahomes' shoes. He wakes up that morning, Oof. and it's just like, yeah. wow. Dad. Yeah. This like, week, come on. Of all weeks. So, but I, I, I think he'll be fine going yep. into the Super Bowl. He'll put it, kind of put it to the side, but it will still be the storyline as of tomorrow. For sure. As far as the media is concerned. We got much more coming your way for Super Bowl 58. We even have some Dallas Cowboys stuff. But Brock Purdy was asked specifically about that one question that you knuckleheads have been on the entire year about being a game manager. And we finally hear from Brock Purdy on that silly criticism. Plus, the Dallas Cowboys might very well found their new defensive coordinator. Ooh. And you're not going to like it, Cowboy fans. We'll give it to you right after this on FS1. Brock Purdy, as I've been saying for a long time, is the best quarterback in football. He's the second coming of Joe Montana. Would you trade your starting quarterback for Brock Purdy? I'm a Jet fan. Yes, I would. Where's Brock Purdy? 16th? Right yeah, what's wrong with that? It's time for the machine to machine. Brock Purdy is not <laughs> what, who, he is who we thought he was. Bye-bye, America. He is who we thought he was. <laughs> Me and Plax have been battling on Brock Purdy all year on this show. And if the show was not at 3 o'clock in the morning, Niner fans would love it. <laughs> because I, we've been on Brock Purdy since Labor Day, pretty much. Anyhow, my main man, Plax, to go Burris. Let me go to Brock Purdy here because... You know, the, the, the rub has been, oh, he's a game manager. He's a system quarterback. So Brock Purdy was asked <laughs> specifically about that, and here's what Brock Purdy had to say. Go ahead, guys. I think it's sort of funny just because, you know, we're winning. But I think over time I might get some respect, but more than anything it hasn't been about proving people wrong or any of that. It's, it's always been about, you know, just proving myself right. You know, over time I've told myself that, you know, I'm good enough and I'm worthy enough to be playing at this level, and over time, I'll prove that to myself. Uh, he certainly proved that he's an NFL quarterback. You can debate where you want to rank him. We won't yeah. do that today, obviously. But the notion of being a system quarterback, a game manager, I'm glad he finally spoke out and kind of finds it comical. Or I'll start with Plax and I'll go to Jacobs. Are you willing to finally say he's better than that? Uh, I would say he's a good ah. <laughs> Good player. He's a good quarterback <laughs> for what they ask him to do. I think Kyle Shanahan understands and knows what he has in Brock Purdy. Okay. I mean, as I sit here and watch the, watch the game and watch him manage the football games and co play quarterback for this, for this <laughs> offense and yeah. this organization, what I'm learning is that, you know, he throws a lot of balls at the line of scrimmage, throws screen pass, sometimes throws the ball behind the line of scrimmage. Uh -huh. They run a lot of level concepts, a lot of drag routes with Kelsey. What do we say? When one's going, one's Let's coming, they back. got a five-yard drag. Then they got a 10-yard drag. Then they got a 15. So it's there's levels of him throwing the ball over the middle. That's why you see a lot of his interceptions happening over the middle. Shanahan is not asking him to throw the ball out on the edge because I don't believe that he really has the arm strength and the accuracy to make some of those throws, those post corners and things like that. He struggles with those kind of things. Okay. So they have basically one uh, timing out route where uh, Brandon Ayuk lines up on the weak side and they throw a six-step out route, which is a 12-yard pass. pass. Other than that, the level concepts, if, if your team's back know you in this defense, you're telling your team, you know what, guys, all we have to do is tackle the catch. 
We can't allow Kittle to catch a five, six yard drag and run for 30 and 40. Right. We gotta, we gotta get Christian McCaffrey on the ground. We gotta get Debo Samuels on the ground. We can't allow these guys to catch hitch routes and 10 yard routes and go for 50 and 60. So with that being said, they're not asking him to, you know, you know, uh, you know carve up defenses with his arm and make reads. I think when you take his first read away, he struggles a little bit with making the uh, second and third option. That's why you're seeing him running the football a lot more in the playoffs. I love everything about this whole Brock Purdy narrative the last couple of weeks. I love everything about it. I'm, 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 do you hear Plax? Plax is like, all you have to do is tackle him because he doesn't throw it down. No, no, he doesn't go down the no, field. No, if you, you make tackle, tackles, you tackle, tackle the wide receiver. That's what I mean. Yeah, because right. basically what you're saying is he's not going to throw the ball down the field to so tackle the field before the sticks, and I'm you're fine. fine. But here's the thing that's really fueled this. This is what's fueled this conversation is he's been bad in the playoffs. Yeah. Sure, he's been finishing games, and he had a couple game-winning drives, and they look great. But he has not played well in these two playoff games. If he was playing lights out the last two weeks, this conversation wouldn't be a conversation. But he hasn't shown me anything this year in the playoffs that made me feel that so he the is question, one of the top quarterbacks. The question becomes, uh, how much do you value, let's say, a half of bad football, which he's authored right. the last couple of weeks, versus game on the line, this is it. And he makes play after play after play with his legs instinctively and with his arm. Because I can show you stats. You don't want them. If the Green Bay Packers catch those two interceptions yeah. and, and, and the Detroit Lions defender doesn't let the ball bounce off of the front of his helmet <laughs> yeah. and Brandon Ayuk catch the ball in the one yard line, right. I mean, it, it's not a good game that he played. And, I agree. He was a quarterback. But game on the <laughs> line, all of a sudden chance to take the lead late. Brock Purdy was money good. Yeah, and I struggle with this and only because I have to come here and deal with it. It, it, it. I always struggle with the game manager versus playmaker. And I think going back and watch some of his film, I think he's a playmaker. And I have, a, I have footage right here. Let's so, do it, Willie. This is ahead. versus the Cowboys, right? Sitting in the pocket, does a hell of a job. Talk about cover two shell. Look at Vander Ash, the middle linebacker, right, for the Dallas Cowboys. Drops Gets back. The, drops back right over his head to Brandon Ayuk. Right. And to Valid, this level. is in the middle of the field, and this is a level throw. But what I love about this overall, this is him making a decision with the football in his hand. This is him being accurate with the football in his hand. This is him having enough time and putting this right on the money where Van Der Esch can't get it. So as much as you would say he's a game manager, he's a playmaker. That's yeah, a playmaker that's a making a, right that's a dot right there. So yeah. I'm with you, Craig. I'm, I'm starting to slowly. Yes. Starting to he's, slowly. He's one of the only quarterbacks that I can remember. Bit. There have been some where even Come if on. they win the Super Bowl, we're clock, still going to have doubts. Don't be that guy. He can win the saying. Super Bowl. He's, he can win the Super Bowl and, and say, I'm going to Disney World or Disneyland or whatever. And I would still be like, hey, he's all right. He's fine. Yeah. Look, if, if they win the Super Bowl outside of playing like crap for a half or more and having one great drive to win it, I would think that the majority of people will eventually tip their cap and say, Brock Purdy – is a very good quarterback. Not playing. And if he and if he doesn't, what do you say then? Then Brock Purdy's not a very good quarterback. <laughs> not very good. But I'm on the Brock Purdy wagon. I've been on it all year long. And my hope is that he can match whatever Mahomes does. We know who Mahomes is, right. best quarterback in football. Uh, if he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Patrick Mahomes, then I, I hate to say this, but yeah. move over Josh Allen. Move over oh, Joe stop Burrow. Stop it. There's a new sheriff in town. No, Stop he's not. No, <laughs> he's not. Don't start Stop that. He's not. There's a new sheriff in town. He's not, Stop. He's not Joe Burrow. And his Burrow, name is Billy Hatton. He's not, he's not <laughs> no Josh Allen. No new sheriff in town. Reggie Hatton's excuse me. Yeah. Lamar yeah. Jackson, hey. Josh yeah. Allen, Joe Burrow, he's a muscle Pat Mahomes. Yes. He can try to I want to be clear. Mahomes, but if, it won't happen. If my guy, Brock Purdy, outperforms whatever Mahomes does, acknowledging that, you know, they're not going against each other. But if he outperforms the great Pat Mahomes and leads San Francisco to victory, I will bring back my top ten list of the best oh. guys in the Super Bowl. Oh, okay. I'll be here. Because okay. remember this. I'll be remember here. Remember this. I'm the only guy in America that's got Brock Purdy as the second best player in this game. That is true. And for those of you in Kansas City they even make that, that are angry at me, that I have George Kittle at number seven and Travis Kelsey's not on the list. Travis <laughs> Kelsey. Williams number six. Travis Kelsey yesterday came out and said, George Kittle is the best tight end in football. So even Travis Kelsey agrees with my list. But oh, Brock man. Purdy, it'll go like this. If Brock Purdy outperforms the great Patrick Mahomes, your new top five will be Mahomes one, okay. Brock Purdy two, no. and then it don't matter. Just three, like four, I've five. been saying the whole season when we had this argument, yes. Brock Purdy versus Patrick Mahomes. 
I've been telling you that Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in all of football. Yes. You guys sat here all, all season saying that, no, it's Brock Purdy this, Brock Purdy this. Patrick Mahomes has willed this team back to the Super yep. Bowl yet. Yeah. But now yeah. he's meeting a quarterback that's not afraid of the moment. And listen, that's that's Brock, Purdy, Brock Purdy Fair. will not outperform Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl for one reason only. Go ahead. What's that reason? And his name is Steve Sachs Bagnolia. Oh, the defensive oh, coordinator yeah, of the Kansas City Chiefs, who you know well from your time with the Giants. He will have something for Brock Purdy that he has not seen for. It's going to be a blitz or whatever it may be. Uh-huh. But he's going to play some trap zone with his corners. He's going to trail man, man under, pass it off the zone. He's going to have something special for Brock Purdy, and he's going to have to adjust on the fly. And we're going to see what's Meanwhile, the San Francisco 49ers are still favored in this game. It's two and a half, I see in the screen uh, right there. So I think it was at one and a half, it right? Was one what? And a half. So, one, so the yeah. money is on yeah. San Francisco right now. Uh, but San Francisco kind of views themselves, believe it or not, as underdogs in this game because maybe all the chatters about the greatness of Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. San Francisco tweeted out. And I can show it to you. Against all odds. Yeah. 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 How, all how odds. can you say that? Beautiful, yeah, they how can you say that? They, they were. Well, they've invented the notion yeah. that they're underdogged in this game. Well, the last time they've, been, they lost. they've been a favorite in every game this season. Every that's game right. Season yeah. They've yeah. been a favorite. Yeah. That's how true. can you say against all odds? Yeah. Well, because, you, because they won the Super Bowl. in a hole in the first half. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Underneath that tweet was a video of the NFC Championship game. Yeah. I get that. You're down by 17 or whatever, then it is against the odds. But you put yourself in the position to be against a lot. Yeah, we just talked about how bad their defense was the last two weeks, like giving up 29 points in those yeah. two, two playoff I games. I think the reference is more about we were down 17. Yes, exactly. And we came back and won. No. I think the reference was we embarrassed ourselves against Green Bay and we came back and won. But I'm taking it like no one gives us a chance to win because oh, all we keep hearing about is how great Patrick Mahomes is also, and Andy Reid. They've also earned it, right? Like We're not talking about like a make-a-wish team. Like This is a team that's been there. <laughs> we're talking about a team that's been there and done that and has been to the four Super Bowls in the last five years. Look, so. here's the reality a lot of people just have to come to terms with. Uh, and that is, I know it's on paper and the game is not played on paper. But there's no arguing the fact, even if you're the biggest Kansas City fan in the world, you can't argue that San Francisco's better. They're a better you football cannot. team. On, on paper, paper. Well, they're, 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 talented on paper. they're a talented better roster, football yeah. team on, paper for sure. on a piece of paper. The San Francisco 49ers are the better team. On paper versus the Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers. Yes. Both yes. games they spoke uh, uh, could have lost. Right, yes, they won. to lose, but they, they won. won. Yeah. But they are playing the Super Bowl. I don't think it's close in terms yes. of this roster. If you look at the roster position by position, oh, the 49ers man. are Niners more are talented. It's unbelievable. Right, yeah. so we're all on the same page I think it's the that. first time I've ever seen an offense, and this is no joke, Go. that have, I believe, is five first-team all-pro players on one offense. Right. I don't think I've ever seen. I, maybe you had Larry Allen and and uh, oh, Dallas, Dennis yeah. Smith, Troy sure. Aitman, and Michael yeah. Irvin. Yeah. I think they have five first-team All-Pros on offense. Right, which is why I say on, on, paper, on paper, San Francisco is by far but where, the better team. But where they have the advantage is at the quarterback position, which is the most influential position. In the yes, sport. that's fair. Hey, by the way, real quick, before we take a break, uh, for those of you saying, what about the Dallas Cowboys? Well, they're not what? in the Super Bowl because yeah. they never are. But it looks like they're bringing in former head coach Mike Zimmer yeah. uh, to interview oh, for the defensive coordinator job. Uh, Obviously, that job uh, remains unfilled. Uh, As far as we know, they are not bringing Wink Martindale in. They should. They are not bringing Rex Ryan in. They should. But it looks like Mike Zimmer gets the next crack at it. Yeah, it's been 13 seasons as a Cowboys coach, a defense coordinator, uh, coached on the four head coaches. Obviously, he knows Mike McCarthy because they have the same division, battling each other. But his reputation is is, is a fair one. I mean, he didn't do a hell of a job as a head coach, but as a defense coordinator, he comes with high regard. So we'll see what happens. And if I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan – uh, Wink, uh, sorry, Mike Zimmer doesn't make me moist at all. Well, one of the, I get concerned ooh. about that. What happened? Ooh. <laughs> one of the problems is, is, is we always talk about this hire as being a potential replacement for McCarthy, and that is not inspiring. If you're going from McCarthy no. to Zimmer, that does not inspire hope if you're a Cowboy. I agree. None I mean, of it inspires Even hope. going from Dan Quinn to Mike Zimmer is... Uh, yeah, I give lateral, you that too. Lateral yeah. movement. Yeah. Now, I think Rick Martindale would make people moist and happy. I think Rex Ryan would make people happy. But if I'm a Cowboy fan, I'm now right. saying to myself... 
I mean, when is this thing going to get better? Because yeah. it's not getting better. No disrespect to Mike but Zimmer. But that's because they waited too long. I said this last week. When they kind of when they were trying to figure out what was going on with Dan Quinn, you talking about Fangio and some other guys already had jobs. So now this is what they have. We got much more football coming your way. Uh, Bill Belichick took out a full page ad in a Boston newspaper. We'll bore you with the details of that. And Travis Kelsey talking all tight ends. Uh, coming up in the next segment as we get ready for Super Bowl. 58. Yeah. Before we get to first in football, we've all gotten kind of tired of those silly gender reveals. Mm-hmm. I know you guys did it many years ago yeah, yeah. Uh, when your wife actually broke her ankle. Uh, a wrist, was the wrist, it? Yeah, yeah bro- broke her wrist because a uh, relative kind of pushed her out of the brother came around the yeah. corner too hot. Knocked <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Edge rusher. So yeah. check out this gender reveal. Uh, they're using a soccer theme uh, for this gender reveal. And I want you to pay attention to the gal in the background. Yeah, so we're having a boy. What is it, purple? That's purple uh, boy. It's a it's a foreign country. Um, <laughs> they couldn't afford blue. They got purple. But watch the gal in the back. <laughs> Brother. Oh, she got hit with the thing. Oh. <laughs> Abuela. Oh. Abuela. Oh. <laughs> to the right, the chops too. Oh. One more time. Why is it purple? Oh man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She ate it. She yeah. ate the whole thing. Oh. But congratulations. It's a girl. Uh, is it a girl? It looks like so, it. Yeah. I think it's a girl. Okay, they're having a girl. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the, the poor uh, grandma, abuela, yeah, abuela. in the background like, yeah, I'm so happy like for you. Though. You ruined my Sunday's best. Anyhow. <laughs> uh, and from that, we go to first of football and some Bill Belichick news. We have some Bill Belichick news. He made news because he took out an ad in the newspaper, the Boston Globe. Why is it with a scarf? Wrote sort of a confusing thing. And I'm not going to read all of this, but he, he thanks the fans in New England. And he ma- makes a little joke about his fashion sense in his press conferences. He says, I love coaching here. Together we experience some amazing moments. Yeah. What I find interesting about all of this is this reads like a retirement. And he was up uh, for jobs. Yeah. There was nine open jobs. He got zero of them. Do you think he will be a consultant? Do you think he could be a defensive coordinator? Do you think he'll be a broadcaster? What will he be next season? Well, I think he could be whatever he wants to be. I'm sure Fox and every other network would at least have a conversation with him yeah. because of the star power he brings. Now, as I've told you guys before, the Bill Belichick we've seen in all these press conferences is, is an act he's putting on. And he decided, I'm going to be the curmudgeon. I'm going to, you know, deadpan everything and not give you any information. But the Bill Belichick that I used to know in Cleveland was one of the most outgoing, funniest guys uh, in the life of every party. Uh, so he has that capability of being that guy as well. Plax can tell you better than I can. Bill Belichick has maintained a very close relationship with the Mara family, the owners of the New York Giants, and has kind of been an unpaid consultant for them over the years, even while in New England. They go to him for advice on coaching hires Hire uh, and some other things along those <laughs> lines. So I would not be surprised if that continues. I would not be surprised if he's on TV uh, somewhat infrequently next season. And I will not be surprised if he very quickly after a year hiatus is back on the sideline next year. I do believe that uh, he will be back, you know, coaching football. But just like you said, uh, he can pretty much do whatever he wants yeah. to do. But I think there's one thing that he will not do. Go. I think he his ego is too big to be an assistant coach or a coordinator I agree with you for on any that. team. Yes. I think if he does go back to coaching, it'll be on the sideline for a team. But he will, he will Dude, be the head you coach. You can't win six Super Bowls and take right. a defensive coordinator job. Right. Because to be fair, it is beneath you. Right. Because yeah. who's the head coach but, that's better? But but what are you thinking if you're Bill Belichick and you know, obviously you went to uh, Atlanta twice. Yep. You interviewed for that. So I, I thought for sure that he was going to get the Falcons. I was shocked out. he didn't. And with those vacancies that they had out there this year, he didn't get hired by any NFL team. So what does that, you know. It means one of two things. Either he said to a lot of those teams, I respectfully have no interest in that job. Like, I don't think, I think we're on the same page. He wasn't going to go to Carolina. Right? That's not on the table. Uh, and there's other situations like that. No quarterback, maybe questionable ownership or front office. But when Atlanta interviews 14 candidates, and that's what they did yep. for that job, and you fly Belichick in on the private jet for the second interview, right. and then you don't give him the job, I'm saying to myself, if I'm Bill Belichick, I'm too good at what I've done. 
I've won too many games, too many Super Bowls to be humiliated like that again. I'm not doing it. So if I am going to take a job, maybe next year, and you kind of use this year to relax, you know, have some life. Because as you guys know, the life of a coach is not pretty. It's 18-hour days. Yeah. You're not with your family. And there's a lot of things that no one ever considers when it comes to being a really good coach and the time you put in to being a really good coach. My gut is... If he does come back, and I'm with you, I think he will coach next year. It is not going to be a big ballyhooed thing. It's going to be very private, quiet, and all of a sudden there's going to be an announcement that so-and-so has hired Bill Belichick. Yeah, but on top of that, I think it's also an indictment of where the league is at right now. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. if you look at where the league is at, they're hiring younger. you got to understand, to your point, you've said it time after time, this guy was six Super Bowls. Coach Tom Brady, historic defense, historic offense, all and all. And for him to walk into Atlanta and not come out with a job, because right now it's not about, listen, you know about Bill Belichick's system. It's militant. It's his way or the highway. Yeah. That's no longer the NFL. These coaches have to be able to adapt and be able to relate to the culture within the locker room. He's, he doesn't have that anymore. So I think that's just a title. I think that's talking about where he is as a coach, and nobody wants to care about his loyalty. Plus, say about this about way. Loyalty. There are more head coaches in the NFL right now uh, under the age of 40 than over the age of 60. All right? So the older coach is slowly but surely kind of being you know, kicked out. Uh, and the new wave uh, is guys in their mid to late 30s, early 40s, yep. they dominate the coaching sidelines right now. Moving on to second and football, Cliff Kingsbury. Remember him? He was the Cardinals yeah. coach. Last year, he was an offensive <coughs> coach at USC, coaching Caleb Williams. Got a hot wow. girlfriend. There is a rumor <laughs> that he is going to be hired as the offensive coordinator. There's reports. It looks like that's going to happen. Does this tell you that the commanders with the number two pick yeah. will either move up to number one to get Caleb Williams or – do whatever they can to get Caleb Williams. Well, I think it's certainly on the table, but I, if I could just back up this conversation for a second, I'd love to know from Antonio Pierce what happened. Because Kingsbury, that was his job, to be the offensive coordinator with Antonio Raiders, Pierce Raiders. in Las Vegas. And we thought on Friday that was a wrap. That was right, done. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden we hear Kingsbury decided not to take the gig, but three hours later he's going to Washington. So either Washington said, how much do they offer you? We'll double it, something like that. Or something else went down, Plaxico Burns, and I want to know what it is. Hey, it, it, it didn't happen. Ah! That's, that's all I can tell you. Well, let's but, call uh, Antonio up and find out. You know what, uh, obviously – uh, Kingsbury went to uh, Las Vegas to interview for the job. Yep. They thought they had him. And let me stop you there. We don't know what, they don't know what happened. When it looked like Kingsbury was going to be the Raider offensive coordinator on Friday, the story that accompanied that was the Raiders are going to find a way to trade for Justin Fields. Right. And yeah. that he was going to come to Vegas and he would learn under the tutelage of Kingsbury. Now we find out. It doesn't happen, and he immediately goes to Washington, which, yes, as Jacoby brought up, brings up the notion of they're going to try to reunite him with Caleb Williams. I mean, maybe this new ownership uh, in, in Washington have, you know, spoken to Kingsbury and what their plans are as far as the draft, and obviously him having a relationship with Caleb, having co coached him in college. But I think all this rests on is what the Chicago Bears are going to do with Justin, with Justin Fields. Sure. Because if, if, if they're going to trade him or you know, whatever the case may be, Caleb Williams is, is the number one pick in the draft. I, I don't think that Washington can trade him. I don't think the Chicago Bears will give up the first pick to Washington just so they can acquire right. uh, you know, Caleb, Caleb Williams. And, and Justin Fields is going to continue to be your franchise quarterback. Now, I do have this question for you. When you're Cliff Kingsbury, and it looks like you're going to Vegas to work with Antonio Pierce's coaching staff and be the offensive coordinator, and then on the 11th hour you turn your back and you go against your word and you take the Washington job, do you think at any level his new agent uh, played a role in that decision? Here's her picture in case you just needed to see it. Uh, there you go, yeah. Oh, there you oh. go. Oh. Yeah, that's his girlfriend, Plax. Yeah. So I put it up there. It's Monday. It's cold here in it's, New York. Yeah. Um, it's a safer job in but, Washington than Vegas. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yes. When you're dating her, you probably want to bring her to Northern Virginia. Correct. 
more than you want her if I'm working 18 hour days out on the strip and, uh, in Las Vegas. Craig, all that money walking around that town, that's you gotta right. be careful. Yes, Plus, that's my it. suggestion is try to get pregnant as quickly as possible. Whoa. But that's, wow. I mean, yeah, that's, that's wow. my suggestion. That's what you call a trap zone. Yeah. That's yeah. what you call <laughs> 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 you crack it. You know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, <laughs> look, I mean, you know what is? They're not engaged, they're dating. Yeah. That's his girlfriend. She's a beautiful woman. She's a bikini model, or whatever the case may be, right? If I'm in the office 18 hours a day. Craig, you're right. I don't want her in Las Vegas because I'm insecure about Craig, it. Pool I parties. Want, yeah. Uh, dinners. Yeah. Uh, the nightlife. A girl like that? Yes. She's gone in week one. That's what I say. Yeah. Because the first scumbag that comes along with a couple black chips in his pocket yeah. is like, what's your name? Well, right, you'd be like, right? baby, the Raiders aren't winning this year. Come, come be with a winner. Yeah, now, oh, what man. I would do is you go to the suburbs of Northern Virginia where there is no social life, nope. and you get pregnant as quickly as possible. It's called oh, having a plan, guys. God. That's right. It's that is a plan. plan. That's yeah. my plan. That only you will come up with. You got to plan. I'm with you. I'm here for you. And I do get out dating advice on the side. <laughs> Craig.Carton at Fox.com. There so. you go. Moving on to third and football, let's talk about tight ends that have nothing to do with Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury's girlfriend. <laughs> the Super Bowl features two of the best tight ends to ever play the position, but it was Travis Kelsey speaking about his opponent Kittle, and he gave him the proverbial belt. Here's Kelsey. The king of tight end you, man. He's uh, best tight end in the league, and I mean, deservingly so this year. He's been playing lights out. Um, playing the best football of his career and uh, really catapulting that, that San Fran team uh, through the playoffs, man. And I uh, couldn't be more proud of him and couldn't be more honored, really, to go up against uh, George in another Super Bowl. So, Craig, which team do you think has the edge at the position? I mean, I, it's still it, – it, Kelsey's the best pass receiving tight end, most likely, most people's list yeah. in the history of the NFL. George Kittle's a better blocker right. and is a more selfless player. And that's not a knock on Kelsey. That's just the situation Kittle finds himself in where there are weeks that go by where he only gets one or two targets because he's such a big part of their blocking game when he needed to be earlier this yeah. year. But you're talking about two dynamite tight ends and the fact that Kelsey – you know, took time and got serious for a second. And that wasn't to blow smoke. That's how he feels about George Kittle. Yeah. Like, George Kittle is as complete a tight end as there is in all football. That's real. Hands down. But the edge does go to Kelsey. We saw it against the Baltimore. His energy and how he came out that game, right. really going nose to nose with that Baltimore defense and having an impact with the catches he had. I mean, I, I think he's, he's, uh, he's playing at a high level. If I can just go back to Kingsbury just for one second here. Because yeah. okay. I, I just have a question. How is it that a coach has a better-looking girlfriend than every guy in the locker room? We don't know that. Yeah, we, yeah, sure we do. Some of the guys, <laughs> yeah. the locker, we the guys yeah. in the locker room might, have, yeah. might, might push back against that. Right. Right. I'm like, no disrespect to the wags of the Niners and Kansas City. You know, Olivia Culpo yeah. is dating Christian McCaffrey, uh, and on and on. Uh, but Cliff Kingsbury. He's right. winning. It's a win. It's a win for him. That's a win across win. the board. Yeah. Yeah. That's a win. Great job. That's a that win. is amazing. I just had to say that because <laughs> yeah, yeah, I felt it, and I thought the audience deserved to see another pair of picture. Of her. All right, coming up, a little segment we have called Get Learned. Get Learned. Get Learned. All these now off the field distractions that are coming at Kansas City. Is it going to be too much for them to focus and beat San Francisco in Super Bowl 58? Uh, thanks for coming back. That's Black Scarborough. That's Willie Colon. Yeah. That's David Jacoby. Time for a segment we call Get Learned. Get These are all the things I learned this weekend. Number one, and it is Super Bowl related, of course, Taylor Swift, not in love with Travis oh, Kelsey. Oh, oh, I didn't oh, learn that. Oh, oh, America's Kanye. couple. Yeah, 13 uh, Grammys, right? Uh, uh, I watched the Grammys last night until yeah. I fell asleep. Uh, and I learned two things last night. One, Killer Mike got arrested. I don't know why. Yeah. But number two, the thing Ooh. I learned. Yeah. yeah after he got his yeah. third Grammy, he Can't got handcuffed. Three Grammys gets arrested. And his no shoulders reason. are so wide, they needed double cuffs they double to cuff him. But that's another story for another day. Here's what I learned. She was up on stage a lot yesterday because she won a bunch of Grammys. Yep. And her album was for the fourth time. You know, Grammy for best album and all that stuff. And she took time to announce the dropping of a new album oh, in April. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. But you know what she didn't do? Holla. At no point did she mention Travis Kelsey, oh. go Chiefs. She had nothing read on. And it was almost as if she was single on the prowl. 
Yeah, it's, it was a bad look, but at the end of the day, you know, what are you going to do? What did you want her to say, Craig? Go Chiefs. I guess go Chiefs. And the other people say, go Chiefs. Something that or Maybe some red lipstick or. Just go Chiefs. She always wears light red lipstick. Uh, really? Like, how about a little TK87 pin? Something oh. like that. Oh. Ugats. Nothing. Nothing. So, uh, we've seen this before. He's much more in love than she is. Are you calling her selfish? It's not going to end well. Just I'm just going to tell you that. Uh-huh. And I have I've no quarrels with her. Oh. But that proved to me that she's not in love because that was an opportunity in front of the music world to say, I got a man. But maybe she doesn't. <laughs> anyway. yeah. All right, second thing I learned this weekend is that I find myself feeling compassion. And most of you know I have a black heart. And yet <laughs> I am feeling compassion for a guy I'm rooting against, and that's Patrick Mahomes. I want San Francisco to win the Super oh, Bowl. Dad. Because his dad, unfortunately, that's his mugshot so. from uh, about 24 hours ago. For the third time, got picked up on a DWI uh, in Texas. He has major legal problems coming his way, because when you do get arrested three times for that, it becomes a felony. So there are serious charges coming his way, unless his lawyers can figure out a way to get out of it. But it's another distraction for Patrick Mahomes and as good a guy as he seems to be, and straight-laced, and always doing the right thing, and never putting his name in harm's way. The fact that he has to deal with his knucklehead brother, and now, unfortunately, his dad, you know, puts himself in the spotlight eight days before the Super Bowl. I feel compassion for Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I think the unfortunate statement is that this is the third time he's had to pick up the yeah. phone to hear about his dad in a situation, so that's troubling. But overall, Pat has done a great job of kind of blocking out all the nonsense yeah. and being the best quarterback he can be. But Super Bowl week is different because whether we all want to respect the privacy of it's not me, it's my father, he's got nothing to do with Super yep. Bowl 58, he's going to be asked the question. And maybe it stops after today. That's certainly possible. Right. But he's going to be asked about it. And I'm sure on the side, as really the, the new patriarch of the family, because he's got the money, Correct. all of a sudden he's going to have to deal with stuff offline that we know nothing about. That's real. I mean, it's going to continue throughout the rest of the week because they're just really just getting settled in in Vegas for the Super Bowl. And just like I said earlier, you know, tomorrow's the National Media Day where every guy has their selected, you know, place, their podium. And, you know, the the media, they just walk around from guy to guy. And I can't wait to see the crowd around Patrick Mahomes tomorrow. And, and people digging you know, for him. Yeah. It's going to be 100 just, people just to, just, to, just, just to maybe ruffle his feathers. Sure. See how he's going to handle well, it. Good, look, but, but, right. I, but I do think he'll handle it well, though. Yeah, I, I do too, by I way. hate it because, listen, we're, we're all dads here, and if your son wins the Super Bowl, you want to have a beer with your dad. You want to have a drink. And now if there's going to be an optics of him and his dad yeah. drinking, they're like, oh, his dad, you got to watch out for his dad yeah. now. And it's unfair, but yeah. it's – where he's at right so really, he doesn't even show up to the game this year. It emphasizes you know? the just position of these two quarterbacks and sort of how we view them. I don't know who Brock Purdy's dad is. I don't know who his wife is. I don't know who his brother is. Yeah. But with the Mahomes, he's been such a star for so long that we this all this ancillary stuff comes in. Now, the only Purdy that's come out, his mom did an interview on the field after the NFC Championship game uh, and talked about his background, you know, going to church and being yeah. a God-fearing family and how, you know, God has a plan and it's worked out and all that kind of stuff, which is very easy-peasy stuff. Yeah. Much different than having to deal with, you know, relative embarrassing you. So we'll see if that plays itself out. My hope is that that new cycle ends today. Yeah. So they will ask him about it today, maybe even tomorrow, when they do those one-on-ones that you're talking about. Uh, outside of that, by Wednesday, Patrick Mahomes Sr. should not be the storyline. But, you know, it's the Super Bowl, and you can't stop people from asking the questions. All right, number three. I used to love flag football, but here's what I learned. I hate flag football now. (laughs) And the NFL ruined it for me, too, yesterday uh, with another flag football game. I try to watch this, guys. I really did because I love football. (laughs) And it's so unwatchable and so bad. It set flag football back, you know, 25 years. The NFL needs to go back to playing a real football game for the Pro Bowl, period, stop. Because this is unwatchable garbage. I with you. One thing about going to the Pro Bowl, man, it is from the optics standpoint, seeing your favorite team come out in their helmets, dressed in their uniform, right. having the shoulder pads on, and actually having some form of competition. With Slayer, he talked about it back in the day. You know, after the second half, that's when guys yeah. turned it on, and valid guys protect each other. But not seeing that. And by the like, way, and by the way. Can we send the thing back to Hawaii yes. where it belongs? Yeah, guys, guys, the guys, I want girls and little things dancing on the so sidelines. Guys were complaining because of the travel, yep. you know, to get to the to get to Hawaii. So that's why they ended up well, bringing the photo because guys were 
tired of traveling to Hawaii. But I will say this, I gotta be honest with you, after me, I watched a little bit of this flag football game yeah. yesterday, I had no idea who half of the guys were. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you really don't know who they are. And you're like, oh, that's oh, that's what he looks like. Yeah. 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 You don't know who these guys are. It's so easy if they're going to If they're gonna keep playing flag football, put the helmets back on. Well, right? yeah. they're going like a, it's like, oh, the game, NFC huge defensive stand to win the game. It's like, what? Right. He, yeah, I had you no grabbed idea. his belt. Is that but what does the stand you, look got, like? If you had offensive defense MVP and you say, well, that's when, you know, they play flag Demar football. Davis, I had no idea what he looked like. I will I'm say this. I want to give the referee some credit because the referee in this game yesterday recognizing this is my moment called flag guarding on Baker oh, Mayfield. Yes, oh, yeah. Yeah. No flag guarding yeah. allowed. He's like, what are and you Ray Lewis about? almost lost his mind over <laughs> yeah. too. Was, Anyhow, let it go. Uh, that took place yesterday. That's a wrap. The NFL needs to fix that in the in the worst way. Uh, the other thing I learned that I didn't know, despite being a fan, is how beloved Tracy Chapman is. Oh yeah, I love Tracy Chapman. Like not for nothing, dude's got one song. Oh, dude. All right. Dude. So late. And she looked beautiful though. Yes. Uh, she's got to be 60 years old. She sounded great yesterday doing the duet with Luke Combs who obviously did her song with great success. She's made a million dollars this year off of Luke Combs singing her song. Uh, so it was great to see her, but man, they talked about her like it was John Lennon coming songs. back from the dead. She's got two songs. Yeah. yeah. Two, two songs. songs. Well, she hasn't been relevant since the 90s. I'll go negative on this. Let, 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 she's she's got two songs. Yeah. What's wrong with that? No, no. If I, you can't have a greatest hits album, then you shouldn't be celebrated like that at the Grammys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I'll say this. I disagree with that. I agree. I, I, I happen, to, two songs. Songs, I happen to love the song. I love the song. But, man, they, they played that song for like nine minutes. And it got to a point I was like, <laughs> I, I know that, you know, you know, it's not going well in your family life, whatever that song's about, uh, but it's enough. Stop playing. Like, it was the same guitar riff for nine minutes. It's like, enough. Anyhow, Tracy Chapman, good to have you back. What makes uh, you happy? That's, 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 that's a better question. We need to have the same thing. You know we need to have the same thing. We need to have black heart. Nothing. You know, we need a segment that says, what makes Craig happy? Yeah, that, that should be legit. No, 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 we don't. That's we know what it's going to be. It's, it's no. going to be Jared Goff's wife. It's going to be Craig's <laughs> girlfriend. It's going to be, you know, Oh, and Spice Drops. Yeah. Yeah. It's Spice Drops. And Rainbow Cookies make me happy, too, guys. Rainbow Cookies. In case you're considering buying. Uh, the other thing I learned this weekend, real quick, we're running out of time here, is that the New Jersey Mafia wrote a huge check to FIFA yeah. to make sure uh. that we get the World Cup final uh, so that Texas doesn't get it. The other thing we learned, and it's another proof of what I've been saying for a couple months on this show, Jerry Jones has lost his fastball. What do you mean? Because the World oh, Cup good. final in 2026 be in Dallas. on Fox, by the way, was supposed to be a Cowboys stadium in Arlington. It was a done deal. But then the Jersey mob got involved and said, not on our watch. We'll take the game. We're in the New Jersey. Yes. What bothers me the most about this yeah. is that if you're a player, you're saying to yourself, you mean to tell me, Y'all are going to grow grass yes. and MetLife Stadium That's correct. for the World Cup Finals. They're bringing but grass But we in. have to play on the worst turf yes. in the world. Yes. Yeah, Great point. point. It's point. the you worst can turf. You grass in, in there? Yeah. Well, they're going to grow it and bring it in. Yeah. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. That's so why good. can't the players have well, grass? Well, I think maybe they'll leave it after 2026. Or smoke it. I would hope so. Uh, uh, I would say, <laughs> if you can grow grass in the Bronx, and you can grow grass in Queens. That's a different. You can grow grass in New Jersey. Different type of grass. Yeah, our grass, yes. grass in the Bronx is a little shit. Yeah. That's about Yankee Stadium. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. No, I'm just trying to, trying to put things in a little bit more. Inside the stadium, the grass is good. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about New Yankee Stadium in yeah. City yeah, Field. Yeah, I'm talking about the one in the Spencer's. And the, uh, the, the final <laughs> thing. Dispensaries. The final thing I learned this weekend is that um, adult movie star Lisa Ann in handcuffs outside of Radio so City hot. yesterday. Not as sexy, to be fair, as Lisa Ann in handcuffs in the movie Blacked Out 2, Jailed and Nailed. So, oh, just, wow. Yeah. I think I've seen that one. Yeah. I have. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm not familiar. Yeah, yeah, it's very similar to Blackout 1. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same cast, by the way. Same cast. Same cast. Same cast. Yeah. Oh. oh. You know what? It's I like learn the, something new every day about you, man. Yeah. It's like the dream team got locked up. <gasps> yeah. The cow. <laughs> yeah. You make that up as everything. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Good morning! Yeah. 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 Y
getting off a plane. That means they are in Las Vegas wow. for the oh, Super Bowl. So hot. <laughs> and George Kittle talked about Vegas, the yellow. environment, and focusing on the game. Here's the tight end for the Niners. Just do what you've been doing the whole season. Don't make anything up. Like, that's my thing. Like, yeah, Vegas, you know, the street, the strip, the, all the lights. It is what it is. But what's really cool would be winning the Super Bowl. Anything else before that is who cares, really. So, Craig, right. how do you think Las Vegas hosting the Super Bowl will change the experience for the players? I don't think it does for the players. I think it does possibly for the people that are going to Vegas to you know, be a part of the Super Bowl week. Uh, you know, all the parties, all that kind of stuff. You know, but you could be in Indianapolis. It's the same thing. You know, there's parties. There's get-downs. There's you know, places to drink. There's outdoor celebrations. The players, to the best of their ability, they try to sequester you guys. Obviously, you guys are going to eat dinner, and you're going to go out a little bit. You're not clubbing or anything like that, you know, unless you're the Buffalo Bills of the early 90s uh, who did everything and then some, and obviously got in some trouble for it. Yo, know, but if I'm if I'm the Niners, if I'm Kansas City, Kansas City, more recent history of, you know, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, you know, the Niners haven't won one since, what, 95, and they've been to one, so there's some familiarity with this. The idea is to get through the week as quick as possible. A, with that injury, yeah. and B, with that waking up to TMZ talking about a guy on your team. If you can avoid those two things from a coach's standpoint, it was a successful week. Yeah, but as much as it's about the players, it's really about the families. Like, we just sat here and talked about Patrick Mahomes yeah. now have to answer questions about his father. Like, this week... These family, their families probably get there Wednesday and Thursday. They understand they're in Vegas. You know, mom is going to want to hit the pity slots. You know, right. your brother's going to hit the club. Your sister's going to want to hit, do many things. You don't want to have one of your family members call you 3 o'clock in the morning when you have to get ready for practice next day. Be like, hey, right. LA, you know, Long Vegas. When do Vegas you guys shut it down? Wednesday, Thursday, when I, I know it's different for both of you, but do you remember trying <clears> to shut question, down that, that type of stuff? <laughs> My memory serves me correctly. I think we got in on Monday. And Tom Coughlin basically went over the schedule and itinerary. And so, you know, one of my teammates comes up to me and says, hey, man, what are we doing tonight? I'm like, yo, man, I'm just chilling. I'm going to get some rest. He was like, no, nah, man, we go, we, we, we've been going out on Monday nights in New York. We're going out tonight. So this is Arizona. And, and, and he was like, we're not changing anything. And I was like, <laughs> all right, let's go. I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah I'm don't serious. change. Don't yeah, change the routine. And we ended yeah. up going out Monday night and the rest is history. But we stayed true to everything, did everything. that we did. Oh, Coughlin must have that, boy. I love, oh, how, I love how hard it was to yeah. convince him to go out. He's like, no, nah, yeah. man, Super Bowl, I'm not I'm going serious. out. I'm serious. I was like, yo, we I'm going to chill, relax, and get some rest. He was like, no, nah, man, we going out. I was like, all okay. right, let's go. I can't believe Eli said that to you. That's yeah. the craziest thing. Yeah. It wasn't Eli. You and Eli go out every Monday. Yeah, yeah. oh, Eli. I know it wasn't Eli. Yeah, it was a guy yeah. on the other side of the ball, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him some grace coach? today. No? Yeah. Huh? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. But, but look, it's one of those things where you can laugh about it because you won the Super Bowl. Right. 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 It's one of those things. Like I told the story about the Bills. You know, the Buffalo Bills. Bills, and I was at the Super Bowl, I guess it was 91, so the second of the four straight appearances. It's when they got blown out by the Cowboys, the Don Beebe, Leon Lett game. Like Thurman Thomas and Jim Kelly were partiers, you know, the famous for it. Now, normally in Buffalo, they'd all go to Jim Kelly's basement on Monday or Sunday night, and there wasn't a single girl in any club or bar in Buffalo because they're all Jim's house uh, <laughs> after a game, that type of stuff, right? And they decided, like you guys did on that Monday, we're not changing who we are. We're going out. And I think it was the Minnesota Super Bowl where they lost to the Redskins at the time they were called, where there was like a bar brawl mm. that those guys got involved in. And they're trying to you know, get them out of a bar before cameras showed up. And that was also the Super Bowl, you might remember, where Thurman Thomas lost his helmet on the sideline during the national anthem. So the Bills offense is going to take the field and Thurman's like, where's my helmet? Who moved it? And they're like, you shouldn't drink the night before the yeah. Super Bowl. Wow. But it was that kind of scenario. That's so true. I totally get what you're saying yeah. when, about the Monday night. I want to get Craig's question answered. With it. When do you shut it down Super Bowl week? Like Friday night you're going out? You're talking about the, for, the, for the team? Yeah, all yeah. the outside distractions. Yeah. When oh, do you shut Wednesday it all night down? you go to dinner, Thursday, Friday... 
it, it's tough. I, I think to what Plax is talking about is whatever you did before this game, continue to do. So yeah. if you were going out on Thursday night or whatever, you did it. However, I think for me, going into that week, it was more about telling the family to stay away from me. Because at, at some point, you have to start dialing in. Because like you said, Monday, Tuesday's media. Wednesday, Thursday's practice. It's about yeah. Friday. Yeah. You got to be like, hey, I'm about to play in the biggest game of my life. Well, so remember this. Kind of yeah, there are regular work days for us. Yeah, exactly. You know, outside of the Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, it's the same schedule as we would have at home, but you still have, you know, your family, your kids. Right. But, you know, you, go, you get back to the hotel, and the first thing is like, all right, uh, uh, what time you want to meet? Correct. Like, Yo, I just want to sit down for a little minute, relax, because your family wants to be around you sure. for the rest of the day, mm-hmm. obviously, because they're not really spending any also, time. Also, the difference when you do a Super Bowl, which has never been done before in Las Vegas, oh, there are rules this year. None of the players are allowed to walk foot inside yeah. a single casino. They're staying about 45 minutes away right. from the Strip out in Nevada at you know, two different hotels. There's always two different hotels for the two teams. If you take the Super Bowl to any other place, you know, South right. Beach, Arizona, Miami, L.A., wherever it might be, you know, none of those places are off limits. You can go to any restaurant you want. How's that Here's different? a place where you're not allowed to go. How's that different from playing in Miami when you have the Hard Rock, which right. is right, right well, on the street? They, I, how is it? It's impossible to not walk into a casino in Vegas because they yeah, have everywhere. casinos Everything and a hotel. Gas right. Or, and and it, even in the airport. I'll do you so. I was telling the guys before the show at, at the Super Bowl that you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers yeah. won, I was eating dinner next to Ben Roethlisberger Friday night. At Hollywood Hard Rock, yeah. you know, at the Hard Rock, you know, before 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 the game. Right. So obviously the rules have changed dramatically because that's what twenty years ago at this point. Yeah, I know. On top of that, as long as with the casinos, you want to stay on. Tell them to stay at the strip clubs too, because that's trouble in there too. Yeah, so don't you go can lose for your money in a strip club just as easy yes. as you can in a casino. Take it from Willie's experience. <laughs> Moving on to our second I mean, my experience. My bad, sorry. <laughs> and that involves the 49ers defense, who haven't played that well in their two playoff games. And guess what? Defensive corner Steve Wilkes. He noticed. Here he is talking about the effort that he's seen his players put in. I think you really have to ask them individually. Uh, collectively, as a team, I can tell you, as a defense, it's unacceptable. So we got to make sure that we play every down as if it's going to be the difference in the ball game. It wasn't to our standard. And those guys understand and know that, and quite honestly, it was embarrassing. Ooh, Craig. Craig. Embarrassing is what he said. Do you expect the Niners defense to play dramatically better? I do. I do because they are better, right? And they played their two worst games of the season, uh, for my money, in the last two weeks against Green Bay and Detroit. I also think that Steve Wilkes, I know no one cares about this storyline, but if they embarrass themselves, Steve Wilkes is going to be the fall guy for it. He's not going to survive and be the defensive coordinator next year. He'd be the first guy Shanahan gets rid of because it would be easy to blame him if they go a third straight game uh, without playing well. Remember, he threw them under the bus a couple months ago when they weren't playing very well during the regular season. I would be shocked if this defense doesn't put forth a great A effort in the Super Bowl. 100%. And I think right now you said it earlier, like Chase Young is not a poster boy of what this defense has been dealing with the last two weeks. He's going to be the and guy. By the way, he's in a contract here. That dude wants to get paid. And right now, he's the guy, like you said, yeah. who's the poster child for not playing up to par. I mean, and then they got footage of him getting thrown around at the line of scrimmage. I mean, we showed it earlier last week, him versus Tyler Decker, which he should have owned that matchup. But he didn't. This is him right now. Look at this. Get out the club, young man. Out them shoes. Boom. Out of Ooh. there, right? And this is one-on-one blocking, right? This wasn't like what you saw out of Michael Parsons getting double teamed and all that. This is one-on-one man-on-man. And Chase Young, who's supposed to be your impact player, getting thrown out, getting thrown out manhandled, right? This that's a big guy, though. Right, and this is what you're putting on tape. So if you're a Chase Young, you got to understand, you got to change that narrative about you. Because right now, going into Super Bowl, the one of the aspects of your, your game right now, you don't hustle, you're not, you don't have an impact, and the, uh, Bosa's out there pretty much playing by himself. And you're supposed to be the book into that. Yeah, if you're Steve Wilkes, you, you shouldn't have to stand in front of the podium at this point in the season and motivate your team and be talking about effort. Right? Yeah. And, it, and they made Chase Young the poster child of, of that statement based off of that loaf and the play that he had, and, and it was a, a, a running touchdown. Touch that, yeah. But right now, you're supposed to be talking about, you know, we can't give up, you know, big plays. Uh, we, we need to get a turnover on defense, things like that. You don't want to turn on the tape on the NFC Championship game and then wonder why you're giving up 160 yards rushing per game and you see effort plays like that. But even so, on this play, like, look at number 99. Make the damn tackle. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just take Him a burst and, of speed look and, and right there. And the Make guy the just walks in the end zone, and, and, that, and he's right. It is unacceptable from an effort standpoint. Yeah, I mean, the fact that uh, defensive coordinator a week before the Super Bowl says 
that my defensive effort, his words, not mine, embarrassing and inexcusable. Well, if I'm a defensive player and that's out there now and that's going to be the headline in San Francisco that my yeah. defense was embarrassing, I now have to man up, right? In, in the last two weeks, what we saw out of the Chiefs, especially from the offensive side, they start fast and they start physical, right? They took yeah. it to Buffalo and took it to Baltimore. So if you're the Chiefs, uh, if you're the Niners defense, excuse me, you got to say you can get punched in the mouth early and you won't recover back. You won't be able to get back in the game with Patrick Mahomes, that quarterback. Oh, I, I think as I'm starting to get a, a good feel for this game. Oh, you're going to feel oh, a good feel, feel for this this game. Oh, okay. I'm getting a good feel <laughs> for this game that, to me, if it's a blowout, it's San Francisco winning by a lot. If it's not that, it's a close game. I don't think Kansas City can blow them out. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. They might don't. not be able to blow them out, but I will say this. You put, put Pit Patrick Mahomes in certain situations if Steve Wilkes want to come out and, and run a lot of zone on defense and run too high safety. Kansas City is going to commit to the run. Oh, yeah. Until, mm-hmm. until, until he comes stop. down and plays a man to man and, uh, you know, a man to man on the corners. Because Patrick Mahomes is not going to turn the football over in the football game and, and put the ball in harm's way. So if you want to give him a seven man front, they're going to run the ball with Pacheco. Well, and Pacheco's been uh, the He's key been the difference guy. to this yeah, offense yeah. and any other yeah. offense since Mahomes has been there. Uh, and they trust him. And he runs hard, like you said. He makes the grass scared. <laughs> yeah. Moving on to our final headline of the day. That involves a man we'll be discussing all week. Who of course, that is Brock Purdy. Purdy. He was asked about whether or not he is a game manager. And here's what he had to say. And I quote Mr. Purdy. He said, that's the wrong graphic. However, he did say, I think it's sort of funny just because we're winning. I think over time I might get some respect. That's right. But more than anything, it hasn't been about proving people wrong or any of that. It's just a bit about proving myself I mean, that's the guy you want your daughter to marry right there. Really? Oh I don't care God. what none of y'all have to say. Me? Yes, oh, you do. My, my, my daughter's taller than him already. She's 14. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> All right, maybe not you, yeah. but the rest of us so, are That's daughters. a good point. What are you, doing? Yeah. you want your daughter to marry somebody 6'5", broad yeah. shoulders, yeah. money in the bank? No, I don't. Well, money in the bank, money yes. The bank. Yeah, 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 money in the bank. Brock nice. Purdy looks like a Sunday school teacher. By the way, this is the face of the Super Bowl 58 MVP. Oh, oh man. Right Brock, there. Look at How that. About that? Yeah, look at, look at that. 16 years old. Look at that. Man. The new face of the NFL right there. That's the first, that's that's the, right. That's a first day intern right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, you're like selling vacuums. That's Show right for there. A job interview. That's the leader of men right there. Oh, that's God. the best quarterback in you the gotta, NFC right there. Brock <laughs> Purdy. Yeah. How about oh, that? He's in the, in the NFC. I had to say that. Yeah, he's the guy they said that when your boss says to fire you, that's the guy that fires he's you He's the right terrorist? There. Yeah. yeah. That's him. Uh, anyhow, ridiculous. I can't wait for this. I know we have all week and we're going to talk about this game too. We're tired of talking about it. And obviously on Friday we'll give you picks. I even hear this word that uh, Craig Shadamas is stopping. Oh, what? Okay. Yep. Yeah. First time in a year. Uh, what about that, uh, that what Craig about Little Bagels and Lux? Little Bagels and Lux? Well, he just got released. Oh. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, right. so he's, he's back. He wants his gig back. Uh, look, you know, it's another story for another day. Yeah. Just so, got released. It's a work release, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's oh, my uh, God. One other quick storyline before we get out of here for, uh, for Undisputed is the Kadarius Tony storyline, which is interesting because now he's claiming that somehow some of his social media accounts got hacked. Yeah, okay. And he wasn't uh, taking shots so at the organization. So it was AI. We're blaming AI? Yeah, for inventing yeah. injuries that didn't exist. But like you said, Plax, he was a healthy scratch the last couple of weeks mm. here in the postseason. And for a guy that they thought was going to be a huge part of that offense, who obviously has had dropsies all year long, and obviously rubbed oh, Mahomes – uh, and Andy Reid the wrong way. Uh, the expectation is that Kadarius Tony is not going to be playing in the Super Bowl. And it's not because he oh, just had a child so and not because he's hurt. It's because he's a pain in their ass and will not be with the Chiefs moving forward. Yeah, yeah I, you won't see him in another Chiefs uniform again. This is done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, I, I wouldn't say he's a pain back. in the ass. I, I, I would say that they just don't trust him. Okay. Especially at, you get to this point. And uh, in the AFC Championship game, he was a healthy scratch. Right. Uh, Rasheed Rice has elevated his play. So now, you know, Patrick Mahomes is, is installing some trust in him to be that playmaker outside of Kelsey. And we had an MVS uh, sighting last week. 39. Game on the line, cover zero. 
he redeems himself from the uh, Philadelphia Eagles game and makes the play to ice the game. So with, with the whole Kadarius Tony thing, they just don't trust him at this. Do you this think that season. MVS making that catch, kind of an acrobatic catch, going backwards on the third nine that sealed the win uh, for Kansas City against Baltimore, that that carries over now to absolutely. the Super Bowl? Oh, absolutely, it does. Yeah. It gives them confidence for him and Patrick Mahomes moving forward. Yep. You're gonna jump in on that, go ahead. Well, I just feel like between. The Taylor Swift stuff, and yeah. then there's the Patrick Mahomes senior arrest, and then there's the Kadarius Tony drama. There's is Andy Reid going to retire? Is, Kel- is Travis Kelsey going to retire? A lot of distractions going around the Chiefs. Yeah, no distractions around San Francisco. We'll break this game down. Or Kingsbury.